want you to succeed at things that you never thought were possible and I want you to fail at things that you never thought were possible. But I just want you to take that failure and move forward. So this morning we're going to talk about the image of black men in our society. Black men are six times as likely as white men to be murder victims. They are two and a half times as likely to be unemployed. They finish last in practically every socioeconomic measure from infant mortality to life expectancy. Good evening, everybody, and welcome to the Imperfect Podcast. I am your host, El Ray. Um, you often hear me talk a lot about like rappers and stuff they say and what they do. Like, for instance, Jay Z telling people how to turn a hundred million dollars into a billion dollars, and my answer is always, "Tell me how to turn nothing into a million dollars without selling drugs." So, um, with that being said, my guest tonight is kind of the definition of grinding or what somebody would call grind or hustling or working their fucking ass off um and similar to me does a little bit of everything and does a lot of a little bit <laughs> um, so without without that without, without any further ado this is ownership 102 with commercial broker and entrepreneur jeff simillion how are you hey, today, sir? <laughs> I'm good, man. I appreciate you for having me on here today, man. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, man. Appreciate it. I'm doing good today, man. It's a beautiful day. Um, been running up and down today, so I appreciate you making the time, um, you know, to have this conversation today. So, for sure. Um, you obviously like you always hear like rappers say stuff like, "Oh, started from the bottom." You know what I'm saying? Um, and Having met you basically like probably like nine years ago at this point, I saw actually you when you were already. 12, what happened? Actually, 12, 2008 to 2009. Okay. 12 then. That's even better. Yeah. Semi, yeah, yeah. It was, it was semi pro after I graduated college. So I graduated out in 2008 and then I went into football. I went to semi pro after that. So. Did you play before then? Yeah, I was in college. Yeah, playing college. You played football there? Yeah, Curry, yeah. Oh, shit. He was, he was, what was you on, Manny's team or Tim's team? Tim. Oh, shit. Brookline yeah. Jesus? Yeah. I hope he tunes in and hears that. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> Brookline Jesus' team? Is that what you talking about? Paul yeah. Killy with Killy? Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, shit. <laughs> uh, so, I mean, before then, basically, did you start from the bottom? Where, where, where did everything start for you? Uh, I was born in Haiti, man. So how much bottom can we get? Hey, you you seen the Haiti episode, man? Yeah, I, exactly. So that's what I'm saying. How much bottom can we get? I mean, it was from here to here, from there to here. So here we are. So you still got the Haitian passport, like Marshall? Or you 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 nah, American nah. now? I'm Americanized. Um, I what was it? Uh, I'm a citizen, uh, American citizen, but I'm still Haitian percent though. Okay. You know, but We're um. Go ahead. Nah, um, I was gonna say, you know, I'm, I'm still Haitian. I'm, I'm in, I'm in Mattapan. My office is in Mattapan. So I'm with my peoples every day. Mm. So, you think, there's, you, know. you think there's more Haitians in Mattapan than Somerville? Honestly, like yo, I, I've met so many Haitians from Cambridge and Somerville. I didn't, <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't know they had. I honestly thought all the Haitians were mad at Penn, to be quite honest. <laughs> it, it was when I got, when I got to college. I honestly, legit, yo, it was when I got to college and I met like so many Haitians from from Cambridge. Um, my man Carl called the Haiti, you know, 
he's from Cambridge, and I met mad kids from from Cambridge, Somerville, and I was like, man, there's a huge population out there. So I didn't know. I thought all the legit. I thought all the Haitians was Mattapan, and and in, in Hyde Park. You know what I mean? So, but I mean, Haitians, we all over pretty much. So, but, so what? So when did you come here? What age? What age? Uh, eleven. Eleven. So where did you school when 11? you were here in Mattapan? No, I went to um in Dorchester. So my I, I I lived in Dorchester. I lived in New York. Then I moved. Then I came to Boston. Went to school. Went to middle school in Dorchester. Went to high school in West Roxbury, and went to college in Milton. Damn. And okay. then, you know, and now I'm working. Like, you know, then I worked all over. But like my my real estate office. So I stationed my real real estate office in Mattapan in 2017 when I when I became a broker. Um, you know, the our neighborhoods, these neighborhoods are under you know, underserved. So I figured that it, you know it might it should be if I'm going to open up office and actually work and 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 make a difference or you know do do my due diligence or whatever it is. It should be at least in my community. Um, you know, I go I go get the money. So you know, I get the white people money too. But most of the time, I just kind of like stay in my neighborhood and actually trying to teach and educate people. Um, on how to go about the process of leasing commercial space, investing, buying, because a lot of people, you know, anybody can help you buy a house, but how many people can actually help you open up a, you know, open up your business and start that process? So, unquestionably, uh, that's 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 my lane. That's why I created my lane. That's you know, that's that's why I focus. That's why I stay at. You so, know what I mean, un- unquestionably, I mean that's 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 really what it what it's all about. Um, so I remember. Back in the day when we was on the team, you had the Mercedes, you know what I'm saying, with the, the Gucci headrests. And I remember yeah, yeah. I, I remember Donnie coming up and saying, I bet you he don't got no damn gas in there. I bet you his tanks are <laughs> empty. It, it caught you lacking with the, with the oh, empty tank. Oh, man, that was Oop. funny. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> Donnie's a hilarious guy. Nah, man. Um, um, I could say, though, I could, like, you know, looking back right there, I mean, around that time, I could just ask myself. I could be honest with myself and I'm like, yeah, what the fuck was I thinking? Mm-hmm. You know what I mean around that time? Because it's like if if like that was what like I said, twelve years ago. So that was like a decade ago. So if you know, like me now, you know, looking at myself back then, I would have been like, yeah, I shouldn't be doing that. I shouldn't have done that. But it was a good time. I enjoyed it. You know. I, I mean, mean that, 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 really well. I get it. But once again. At some point, it still is a mindset that you set up for yourself. And looking yeah. back f- from there to now, I mean, all it was was, you know, from the outside, at least a, a positive growth. So you have yeah. to take everything that you created um, kind of at that point to kind of aid in what you become as a man to these days and when, what you think about and what you see there, what you see now. Because if you never saw that side, then you can't even say, eh, the fuck was I doing then? Because there's still yeah. some 40 year old motherfuckers doing it now. <laughs> Absolutely, and and that's and that's the beauty of it. Like when I think that's that's the beauty of growth is being able to to say whatever you used to do was stupid or was dumb. You know what I mean? Not to say yo you regret or you go back, but like yeah, you could say that. Look, I'm mature from that, or whatever I used to do was wasn't too smart, wasn't the best. You know what I mean? I didn't make the best decision then. You know what I mean? So like now as I get older, I need to make the best decision. And not saying that it was a bad, it was a bad decision. It wasn't a bad decision. It was more so like my thing was um, the the car note, the money that I was paying. I was like, yo, there's other shit I could have been doing with it. You know what I mean? It was it was just that. You know what I'm saying? And, and understanding now, understanding now, like like for example, now I still drive a Benz, but I don't have a car note, and I'm not paying as much. So it's just like then, I, if I'd have known how to do it better, I would have done it smarter. You know what I mean? So it it wasn't the car, you know, it was just the process. The situation I, you want. You know I, mean? I get at that age when you don't have somebody telling you, and and this I'm speaking from experience as well. They telling yeah, you how to manage your credit, telling you how important it is. Like, I mean, but even when you are telling you, I have a friend right now. I told him, yo, I lease. I lease a fucking Nissan. I, and the reason I lease it is because I don't want it breaking down. I just mm-hmm. I can't stop. So. I have had people go, oh, you got crazy money. And I go, no, you make like two times more money than me. But the thing is, is that I drive a Nissan and you drive a fucking Mercedes and you have a $700 payment. And at that time I had like a $250 payment. 
and I'm paying for reliability. So little stuff like that and, and what people assume. And then I told somebody, yo, just wait till you get a, um, a lease. And instead ended up getting a car and, and his payment is like $700 a month. And it ain't even a fucking Mercedes. It's like a regular, regular car, but they just got him on, you know, your credit status at the time. And I'm like, yo, that's not going to help you going forward. It's not going to help your credit. And that, that was the, that was actually my next question is what, what you were driving now. Huh? What, what are you driving now? Same thing, driving a van. What kind of Benz? SLR McLaren. <laughs> I wish. <laughs> I wish. Uh, what, what I got? CLK three fifty. I think. Okay. Two door coupe. Okay. Yeah, not, nothing crazy. Well, don't try to compete with Jamel. We can't catch up to him. That's, that's impossible. <laughs> wait, wait, Jamel, Jamel, stay in his lane. He's a BMW guy. <laughs> nah, he had the Infinity for a little bit. He bought some. Next thing, he might have a damn Lamborghini. Yeah, Where he's so, going. <laughs> yeah. Um. But again, like. It's it's really I, I look at it like here you know, with anything and everything you know, it, it's really just the mentorship and the guidance, you know what I mean? Like this, there is there is the same way at a time where like when I got older, the, like the car that I had when I bought it, I bought it smart. The second time around, I bought it. I bought it. I got a Benz again, and but I bought it smarter where my car was way was less, way less, mm -hmm. and 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 my credit was better, my driving record was better. So all these things going in, I didn't understand that. Like when I got this Benz, um, the first time in college, like I think I was coming off two accidents. I had like high points, yo. You know what I mean? So yo, I over, have... I'll have to cut you off. But every single Haitian dude I know has been in a car accident. What What are y'all doing? Who, who Who doesn't get into a car accident? Me? I've never been in one. You never been in one? No. I don't know. Well, I, I was in one as a passenger. Somebody fucking smashed into somebody at red light. But like, I knew motherfuckers that borrowed their mom's car that crashed it three times. I don't, you know, honestly, I, let me see. Um, I haven't gotten, knock on wood, I haven't gotten into an accident in a while. But I think, like, yo, honestly, it's just, the younger you are, like, the dumb, not dumb shit, but it's just, like, I don't think you think a lot, yo. I did, look, I did some dumb ass shit and lived in Brooklyn, yeah. which is dumb shit, get arrested capital. But see, like, for example, I'll tell you, right, one time I, when I was going to a party in Brooklyn, like, as I got older... I think yeah, as you get older, you start being, you start becoming aware of things, right? Yeah, you don't and, drive through Brooklyn. <laughs> yeah, like for example, yo, I was going to Brooklyn. Yo, I swear I was going to a party at, at um, what do you call it, Johnny's in the West End or whatever, right? And then one of my my headlight, one of my headlights went out, and then it was on my way back, and I'm like, damn, I don't got time to go do this shit. I'll take care of it tomorrow. And and I was like, you know, what? I'll just put my high beam on, and which so, is legal. Which is exactly. <laughs> so I told myself, yo, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna like, yo, if I if I'm going, I'm like, yo, that night I'm getting pulled over in Brooklyn. Literally, like the moment I touch Brooklyn, I try to go through the back way, you know, you know, into like the residential area. It's like, yo, they was waiting for me, but luckily enough, you know, they 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 let me off with a warning, so it wasn't that crazy. But like Brooklyn is serious when it comes to. <laughs> You know, pulling you over. They got cops in every little corner just chilling oh, in a newspaper shit. or doing whatever fuck shit they doing in their cars, ready to pull people over, man. Unquestionably. So. Do you feel that what you drive and what you wear um, has an effect on how people treat you in business or in life? Actually, I'll tell you this, right? Um, growing up, my father used to tell me, yo, the clothes don't make the man, the man makes the man, right? And I used to be like, shut up. You don't know what you're talking about. As I got older, I was like, damn, he was right. Um, again, it's, I think it becomes of awareness, right? Who who are you talking to, where you're going, and who's your clients or whatever it is. So one thing that I find interesting when, when it comes to me, like with commercial real estate, right? Um, you got all different type of owners. You got you got guys that it was it was passed, you know, properties was passed down to. You guys, guys that that work for it. You guys, you know, people that earned it through all different type of business, right? So you have to be, you have to know who you're dealing with. You know what I mean? If if you're dealing with somebody that's very sophisticated, then you can't just show up on, you know, with Tim's and and, and sneakers. You know what I mean? Um, not to say that they will care, but it's just like if if you want, if depending on what kind of deal, what what kind of dealing will you, what kind of business you're dealing with. You know what I'm saying? That how how you how like you got to present yourself in a certain way. You know what I mean? In a so certain you, way, not necessarily the right way. Not what, in the right what, way. What does sophisticated mean? Sophisticated meaning like look, if what does sophisticated mean in a clothing store? Sophisticated I, it doesn't necessarily mean you gotta buy the most expensive stuff. Like I got a sweater on. I don't know where the sweater came from, but 
I got a sweater on and, and some jeans and and, and some Prada boots sh- sneakers on right now. Like, I mean, shoes on. Like, not sophisticated sneakers in a sense. You know, it's like... So, you know, it's like... Pres- what, what is, like, uh, an average presentable or clean? Yeah. So, exactly. So, um, to me, it's just like... So, I, I feel like... right. I mean, not I feel like... To me, I could meet with anybody right now. But if I'm going to meet with, you know, let's just say, um, you know... Brian Lash or something like that, CEO of uh, Lash Industries or whatever it is, and I'm going to be meeting with him to go over one of his office listing that he deals with, you know, labs and doctors and and you know high end attorneys or whatever it is. I can't I can't go up showing up like that. You know what I mean? Because everybody's in the office is going to be having shirts, ties. You know what I mean? It's like I don't want to be the sore thumb in the in the room. Personally, not to say I, you know what I mean. It's yeah, it's it's crazy because it's almost like it goes from like you know dressing a certain way or how, dressing however the fuck you want to then moving up to a level where you feel like that is an acceptable form of dressing, and then if you move up to the next level of money, then yeah. you can do whatever the fuck you want. And 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 there's a funny story about that. Like I was working last year in a in a dispensary. And I was um, the manager, and somebody came in, and it was this, the this Russian dude, and he was like with five other dudes, and he was mm-hmm. like, "Hey, we just co- want to come in, you know, what I'm saying, take a look around." Florida is medical; Florida's not recreational. So we were like, "Do you have a card?" And they were like, "No, we're investors. We came from like where your grow facility is." And I'm like, mm-hmm. "Okay." So the dude that was at the door was like, "Okay, they must really be investors." So he let them in, and they were just looking around and asking questions about hats. Mm-hmm. So they're like, "Oh, can we buy some of these hats?" And so we had to call like the corporate manager to see if they could buy hats. And um, they're like, yeah, just set up a profile for him, whatever. So the kid goes to the ATM, and he doesn't even know how to fucking use it. He's like, it said something number. So so the dude that's helping him is like, it's like a global identification number. And I, and I go, do it again. Let me see what it is. And I go, it's your PIN. And he's like, oh, PIN. So he puts it in, and he takes the money out, and he pays, and they build a profile for him. And there's a dude with them. It's a Russian dude, and he's just in, like, swishy fucking pants and, like, a rundown sweat uh, sweatshirt like like a fucking like what you like a stereotypical Italian goon outfit so mm-hmm. two other dudes with the name saying shit so the dude lets him leave with the hats and he looks looks him up he goes oh I bet you this and I'm like yo I know the dude in the back from somewhere like I know him from somewhere I don't know where it is but I know him from somewhere so he looks the kid up and he goes oh this dude might be a little rich and he goes and I look at it and, it, and his name's Al Kaley I think Al Bramovich and I go yo he goes, he, what? He goes, it's, he's the son of the owner of Chelsea Football Club. And I go, yo, the fucking dude behind him is the fucking owner. Mm. The 16th richest man in the world with the second biggest yacht in the world is up in here with fucking swishy pants and a sweatshirt. Yeah, so, like, this is this is what I, like, I, I realized. Like, you know, that guy, he's coming in to talk to you. He's not worrying about impressing you. You know what I mean? So... There is that notion about it's not necessarily about impressing. Like for example, there's a show called Billion. You got to. I don't know if you if you watch Billion. Right? I I never if watched you, it because I hate billionaires. But I know like my boy nah, Ralph, he speaks very highly of the show. You, you should you should watch it. Is it it comes from again it it's it's a billionaire that comes from no, comes from nothing. He made it from, out of nothing. I mean, well, he made he made his money through. Um, um, through 9/11, when 9/11 happened, you know what I mean. Mm-hmm. But again, he comes from nothing, so again, it still have it's still the same mentality. But like again, it's like the same thing about you get you have you get to a point where you could just how you dress with it however you want, you know, whenever you know wherever you wherever you want to go. But at the same time, there are places that you want to go that you're gonna go that you want to dress a certain way. You know what I mean? And it has nothing. Sometimes I, I mean a lot of time it has nothing to do with with you impressing others. It's more so with you being comfortable. You see what I'm saying? It's it's you being fitting in, fitting the word. in, it, fitting in in a sense. You know what I mean? It's it's not like it's like yo, I'm going into a meeting where everybody's wearing suits. Where you know what I mean? Like I need that too. You know what I mean? I need to be on that. Like you you could be the guy if you want to be like you know I fuck that I don't want to. You could be that guy too. But it's harder to move up like that. Exactly. You know what I mean? So it, it's it's a, it's not about moving up. It's just like. Being, being, you know, like not you not wanting to be the sore thumb in a sense, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But like not necessarily thinking about it, but mostly just you saying, okay, you know what, I'm going in here 
you know, dressing yeah. nice as well and, and showing that I got nice, you know, wingtip shoes or whatever it is that I, I could put the, I could pull out the, you know what I'm saying, the, uh, 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 um, what do you call it? You know, one of these fancy ass suits. You know, Tom Ford or something like that. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. That, that's just pretty much what it is when you when you're on that you know on that fancy level. But like I said, one of the biggest things that I realize when when it comes to this, it's not it's not about uh, um, impressing people with what you you know what you have on or anything like that. It's more at the end of the day, it's really your value, what you what you add on and what you could get what you can get done. That's really what matters and what gets you paid out here. So, um, um so you know? how do you refer to yourself? Like, if I if we were both just in some foreign country and I walked up to you on the beach and I was like, "Hey, I'm ready. This is what I do." What do you do? I'm a commercial broker. You're a commercial broker. Yeah, that's it. Businessman, broker, b- owner, boss. Uh, I mean, you know, none, none of these titles is just complicated shit. <laughs> <laughs> It's just complicated shit, you know what I mean? Like, then you got to ask me several questions, and I got to talk about different things. One of the things that I was uh, – actually, somebody told me that yesterday was just like, um, try to call me uh, – say I was jack of all trade, but there's that saying, jack of all trade, master of none, which I don't – which I was just like – I corrected it. I'm like, yo, bro, I master commercial real estate. I feel like I master commercial real estate. I've been I've been doing this for about six years now, five to six years now. So, um, and I was just like, you know, on some, you know, just just talking shit, bragging. I was like, yo, I've I've done million dollars, million dollars of deals or whatnot. So I feel like, you know, I've I've mastered this. You know what I mean? I've done deals with, you know, a lot of a lot of different deals. So um, I've mastered commercial real estate. I want there are other ventures that I want to I want to transition into, mm-hmm. but I'm transitioning into them. Um, one of the things with, you know, like for example, with 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 low key the dispensary. Uh, my brand is leveling. The brand is is leveling up. It's me leveling up from commercial broker to business owner, CEO, founder of Low Key Dispensary, and being a business owner. So I'm leveling up to that. So I'm. Well, not what you're doing is leveling up to fucking up some future questions. That's what you're doing right now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> my bad. My bad, Ray. My bad. But that's what I'm doing. What I'm doing is leveling up to all the names that I refer to myself as. <laughs> Even though I only refer to myself as commercial broker, just a commercial broker, but <laughs> you know, in the back end, that's really what it is. But I'm just, you know, when I talk to people, that's 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 how I make my money right now. Commercial real estate. I don't make money selling weed. I mean, selling cannabis or owning a dispensary or anything like that. So or or anything else besides commercial real estate. So I make my money is is you know um, fully in real estate. You know what I mean? Okay. So that's that's what I do 100. percent So. That's so, what I'm gonna introduce people. I mean, introduce myself as. What What are the projects that you currently are involved with, other than uh, commercial real estate? So, um, you know, I got the opportunity a couple of years ago to apply for the uh, economic empowerment um, license in, in Massachusetts, which allow you know black people, you know, to basically just being blunt, to apply all our black people to get into the cannabis business. Um, you know that certification went out. I think it, it was. I mean, again, I, I'm speaking from, from I'm speaking from what I know. It. I don't think it was advertised or or anything like that. It was actually one of my commercial clients um, that told me about it, that connected me with a um, investor with an attorney that you know her role she was playing at the time was you know helping people with the application process. You know what I mean. I didn't. Know, I didn't understand the process at the time. I didn't even knew what was going. I on. I mean, to, to, just to expound on what you're saying, and and not, and not to cut you off, my my I'm actually in the next three months. Uh, one of my old bosses is is financing us starting a food truck together. So, and he also has applied for that license in Massachusetts. He said that at the point that he applied, it was only three minorities that applied for that license and for that economic empowerment grant to um, mm-hmm. help you start a dispensary in Massachusetts. So if anybody's in Massachusetts, it's only three people that apply for that shit. This is one of them right here. And my bo- my Xbox is the other one. So I'm telling no, you right now, you know the two people. people. <laughs> there's more people that, there's there more people applied for it, but as many people that could have applied for it, um, or that could have been granted. I know, I know a few people. I know a few people that are um, that's black, you know, that, that has, that has it, that has that, you know, certification. Mm-hmm. Um, at this point, there's, there's more than more than three of them. Because I mean, one of them already. Um, there's one that got approved in in Dorchester. Mm-hmm. 
Um, shout out to um, was it Pure Oasis? Um, and that's the first and, one, right? That's, so that's, that's the be first one. one. Yeah. Yeah. Um, there's another one. I, I forgot the name in Brockton that I got approved. Um, there's a two more that I got approved on Blue Hill. Actually, three, three. So others maybe they just approved. yeah, maybe they just approved them all now. Yeah. I mean, when when your boss probably opened up, I mean, applied at the time, it was probably three. But like over time, more people got in, got mm -hmm. involved. So like right now, there's there's you know, probably like hundreds and thousands of applications. Mm -hmm. um, you know what I mean? But it, it's a process because there's you know there's another cha there's another challenge to it about you know obtaining the real estate aspect because you know that's that's the key component you know what i mean you're going to open up a business then you need a place to run in and operate and obviously you you that's you're already there so it's like so that, I, I already got the space i already got the idea of he, how to get the space so you're your steps ahead of the game when it comes to that so that was so that's kind of like one of the things that that I, one of the things that i had learned early in real estate was highest and best use right a lot of people don't understand how to evaluate themselves highest and best use right meaning that What's the best thing? What's the best thing that what what is your highest value? What's the best thing that you could do? And then that's what you should be doing, right? Where um that was that was basically the um the entry point for me when it came to that was the fact that it was easy for me to get a location because I was in I was a commercial broker, right? I knew how to negotiate deals and I knew how to find I could find the right deal and negotiate the right deal for myself. You know what I mean? Rather than um, you gotta find a person to go. You know, I mean, you know, the 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 the, the normal everybody every everyday person need to go find. I mean, still still today, people still text me asking me like, "Hey, I'm you know, I'm looking for a space, so on and so forth." And understanding that our process is again, I've been in that process since 2018, so it's well over two years, and I'm still in it. You know what I mean? So. And so that 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 was the advantage that I had was knowing that okay I could get I could get a space I could negotiate a space for myself I could tie a space down for myself and and find the the right space in the right location which ended up which I ended up doing um, finding a place that in the community that I grew up in Dorchester and because of that because of what the license allowed and and would allow me to do it so I basically just did exactly what the license. Would allow me to do and and I got approved. You know what I mean? Where it was basically a walk in the park, and I, I could say. It I mean, was, I'm was, sure it's gonna be it's it's easily going to be a walk in the park with somebody that genuinely wants to help in their community. Yeah. That's the difference. So for you, it's like, oh, this was a walk in the park. But for somebody else, you know, a white dude that's never been in that community is gonna have to do a lot of work to circumnavigate. You know what yeah. he needs to say. But yeah. when you're genuine, it's that much easier. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> you know, listen. listen. Yeah, I was like, this guy got chewed up so bad, like he left before the meeting, bro. Like, um, like he, he just, he, like he just left. There was a, there was a little attorney that, like, he was ready to jump in this dude's face. Like, you gonna shut down? You gonna like? Cause the dude came in wanting to buy. It was on um, up in his corner. He was trying to buy a look, uh, um, an existing building that had a restaurant, an um, a converting restaurant. He was trying to buy that building. And open up a shop there, so they were just like rashing them, like yo, you are not gonna come in here, shut down a business, you know what I mean, and then and trying to open up a um, a dispensary when we don't know you, we don't know what you've done for the community or nothing like that. And then the guy was saying how oh he uh, his company gave out money for flower pots for, for the <laughs> so black people gonna love that shit. Yo, <laughs> the attorney turned oh my red. God. This dude turned red was ready to jump on him. And like he just like, you know, they, they had to hold him back and the dude just got up and walked out and just like, yeah man, this is not the community for you, buddy. You know, you're not gonna <laughs> be doing this shit. So. I only think it's I seen a fucking flower pot in up in this corner talking about you gave up flower pots. I punched that guy yeah. in his face. So um yeah. Um, you touched on it a little bit, but what is leveling up, level up, leveling up, in just in more detail of what it is to you, um, the brand? Well, so leveling up again, as I mentioned to you, was you know it, it's it was really the brand. It was really the brand of, of basically just like you know me leveling up. I mean, I started real estate, doing rentals, um, jump into commercial, uh, commercial rental sales, investing. You know what I mean? So it's just you know it's just been climbing the ladder. Um, 
And you know, when I when I was like, okay, I'm I'm going to do be doing this dispensary thing. So I was like, oh, I'm going to call it leveling up, and also, you know, play on word, you know, smoking, leveling up, like ha ha, right? And then, then I was like, yo, the kind of people that I'm that I'm around, it, it's really going to be too too loud. I think like the brand will be too loud, and the way that I move, the way that I am, I'm real, you know, low key. Um, so I was really legit having a session with another dude named Jeff, and then he was just like, "Yeah, man, you very low key, man. You should just." And I was like, "You know what? I'm calling it low key." So I switched it over to actually low key, called the cannabis name low key, and actually kept the leveling up brand as basically as that as like leveling like up, a, like a an investment company. Exactly, like you know, a brand, a lifestyle, like you know, what I'm saying, like you know, what are you doing? I'm leveling up. I level up every day by you know, w- reading, working out, doing whatever it is. So I basically just created a brand out of that, and and kept the the low key, you know, dispensary as its own, you know, as its own brand. You know, basically just you know, for the guys that, for the people that smoke, so that use cannabis on a low key. You know, don't need everybody to know that they're a smoker or nothing like that. So that's what this brand's for. <laughs> that's funny considering, I, I mean, at this point, that just goes back to what you're wearing. You're, we're, we're, we're pleasing people where, I, I said this in one of my last episodes, we're in a country where 75% of the people that you encounter doesn't, don't care if um, marijuana is legal, but we still it's it's not legal because there's still so many old minds and, and old stigma thinking in the kind of the Senate. So that's a weird thing. But um I think we three we two to three generations away from that from that being very to be to be for it to be normalized. I think probably like, one. Probably, probably I, I, I would say maybe like ten to fifteen years. I so, which is why I wrote my book. So, I mean, I I wrote a cannabis book for kids, and it's just the intro and retelling the story. I you I, I told somebody one time that alcohol was more dangerous um, it, than it, heroin. It, <laughs> it absolutely is. <laughs> and they didn't believe me. They were like, "You made that graph up." And I and I told them also that Xanax is the most dangerous drug in the world. And they made that up. And now, speaking from experience in terms of medical marijuana, and I'm going to do a future episode with actually the head of the, of the Florida Cannabis Coalition in Massachusetts. Uh, I mean, not in Florida. So we can kind of talk about that and, and what he sees. Because in Florida, it's still, it's still medical. So there's still a fear of what happens with recreational. And it, it, it's very, very weird with the stuff that you hear people say because I'm like yo the stuff that you I, I well so what I was going into is that I in the last two years I personally weaned more than 100 people off of addiction with um, edible forms of medical marijuana whether it be like tincture oils or edible mints and stuff like that uh-huh. so they get that feeling so off of pain pills off of drugs in different situations where they were able to kind of supplement that feeling that they weren't getting anymore with the relief that they got from medical marijuana um, what made you get into real estate, and did you have any mentors when you got into real estate, or Yo, motivators? I so I'll be honest with you. Uh, so I got me into real estate. I got I got laid off from State Street. Mm-hmm. Oh boy, Robella was just like, "Yo, um, I was telling him like, yo man, give me uh, try and get me a job at uh, I think he was working at uh, BNY in New York. Mm-hmm. And it's funny because I had just interviewed for I had just went for a couple of interviews, um, you know, trying to get promoted at at, at, at um, trying to try and switch location at State Street, and then you know I you know wanted to be downtown or change location from Quincy, and then I got laid off. So I was actually telling him, like, yo, trying to get me into BNY Mellon in Boston. And he's like, yo, man, I'm doing real estate part-time, yo. You should really get into it, you know, especially the rental market. If you make some money, you don't necessarily have to cash out. Um, you don't necessarily have to cash out. You can keep your money, blah, blah, blah. And I was at that time, I was just like, yo, fuck it. You know what? I'll do this shit, you know. And um, one of my boys was working as a bouncer. And he was just like, yo, you could do this at night. And I'm like, yo, I'm about to collect this unemployment, you know, go work this real estate, make this cash money at night from from this bouncing gig. I'll be Gucci, you know what I mean? And sounds and like that sounds like a Donald Trump tax plan to me. <laughs> <laughs> you 
know what I'm saying? So at that time, I was like, yo, I'm going to do it. And honestly, I was collecting this unemployment, you know what I mean? Working real estate, learning it, you know, going through the ups and downs. And actually, I'll tell you, that was that was really what made it what made a difference for me was the fact that I, when I was working real estate, I was under pressure to make a to to make money because I was re- I was collecting unemployment and I was working as a bouncer, um, you know, uh, um, you know, basically ten ninety nine. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Yeah. Getting getting you know getting cash or whatever. So so you know. A night, I'll make two. So hey, hey look, for everybody that's watching, a ten ninety nine is an independent contractor form that you get, like if you're working for Uber, <laughs> and you do have to pay taxes on that Uber drivers at the end of the year. <laughs> at the end of the year, so I so I was gonna pay taxes on that money at the end of the year. So instead of me having to pay money on a weekly basis or a monthly basis, I paid you know pay a lump sum at the end of the year. So I took that approach and said, you know. I'll figure I'll I'll deal with Uncle Sam at the end of the year. You know, we could hash it out and figure out how much I gotta give you rather than you taking the percentage every week. Um so so that basically so that that's that's really pretty much what got me into real estate when, you know, I got in and, and you know, I I wasn't eager to like I said, to close it to to close the deal. I wanted to close the deal, but it wasn't for the money. It was more so like, yo, let me learn this. You know what I mean? Um and because I wasn't chasing deals and I wasn't chasing money, so I it basically came to me, um, and I was able to you know to close a few deals here and there or whatever it is, um, and I focused more on me you know learning the business, mm-hmm. um, and I got hot and you know I, I I was closing deals then I took a break I went on vacation thinking I was hot shot and I went on vacation when I came back I couldn't close the deal at all, then I quit I went back to work. And then I realized, like, I'm like, damn, well, going back to work doesn't really cut it. I should really focus on real estate and, and really, you know, lock in and figure this thing out. Um, but what I really didn't like about real estate at the time was doing rentals where there's no loyalty. It's just like, you know, trying to help people fi- um, find an apartment. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, so I went back to it again. And that's when I realized the second time when I started real estate again, I was like, okay, so this is what I don't like about it. I don't like doing rentals. You know what I mean? It's not real estate I don't like. It's it's the the chasing, the constant chasing and trying to help people find rentals and for short money. Mm-hmm. And at that time and at that time I, I had already, you know, working at State Street seeing, you know, a lot of money and, and wanted to get more money and, and, you know, wanted to live this, you know, this this life. So I was just like, Yo, you know, I can't be living off eighteen hundred dollar rentals or section eight can't even pay me, you know, this and that. I was like, nah, I gotta figure this thing out. So I went into trying to do mortgages. Then I realized the mortgage is the same thing as being a real estate agent. You work on commission, it's based off the deal closing yeah. and so on and so forth. I'm like, this is the same thing except you're in the office. I'm like, I don't wanna be in the office. I'm like, I wanna be out there shaking and dice, you know, shaking and moving and making things happen. So like I said, then I real I realized, okay, the rental is not for me, then what do I wanna do? So now I had to go back to you know, learning about myself, like yeah, what kind of person that I am, you know, and and this is you know playing, being an athlete, being a football player, all of those things came into play because like now it's like okay, so if I'm playing offense, like it's like yo, where you know, like how do you play offense? What do you you know? Do you want to play receiver? Do mm-hmm. you play quarterback? You know what I mean? Tight end. So it's just like now, where do you want to fit in com- in in real estate? You know what I mean? So I was like, I don't want to be a you know, first time home buyer, agent, helping people buy you know, homes or whatever it is. And I was just like, yo, I'm used to selling. I'm a seller, you know, I'm used to selling. I, I, you know, could do things. Like, let me find the most expensive thing in real estate to do, which was basically commercial. Mm-hmm. You know, so I just aligned myself with this company um, that, you know, basically I, I had the opportunity to go work for this company um, and, learned a lot about commercial investing and I really learned it like from a grassroots level um, and I you know went out there and made mistakes and and figure shit out um, you know what I mean and and kind of like the same thing with like you know with being an athlete when somebody tells you you can't do something and you got to like you know, prove them wrong or whatever it is I remember the dude was just like it was going to take you 7 years you know to get to my level and I look at him, I'm like, yo, bro, I've already been in this for two years. I don't got time to for seven years. Like, the fuck is you talking about? Like, nah. I'm like, I'm I'm gonna watch everything you do this whole year and and I'm gonna learn it. 
And that's literally what I did. Like, it's like going to practice every day. It's like every t- everything this dude was doing, I was doing it. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Like 7 a.m. meeting, I, I'm with him. He's like, yo, I'm about to go walk my dog. Like, yeah, I'll come with you. You know what I mean? I'm walking my dog too. Just hold a leash. <laughs> like, yo, bro, like legit anything this dude was doing, like, you know, like, can I come? Like, you know what I mean? Like, can I learn from you? And can I just see it? You know what I'm saying? So it was like everything we were doing. And like, it's like now, you know, certain conversation is not just work conversation. So it's it's a lifestyle conversation. You know what I mean? It's like, how do you move? How do you carry yourself? You know what I mean? The people that you're around. Um, you know what I'm saying? So like, so now learning and seeing all these different things from like, you know, a different level, different perspective, you know, you know, change my outcome. You know what I mean? Change the change the way that I, I you know. Start well, every, I mean, everything that you just said is, and and you know, when people ask me questions and and I mentor them, and I mean, I'm sure you make three times as much money as me, but the way that people see me is like I'm rich. Um, the the things that I always say is that I'm telling you this, and I would have never made this statement the way the guy made the statement because there's no way that if I'm tutoring somebody that it should take them as long to get to where I'm at as it took me. So I'm telling you this to become better than me, faster than me. And that's Indeed. what I always tell people. <laughs> yeah. And 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 like and that's the thing, yo, and when when talking to that guy, um, when he said that and then over time that I realized it was like, yo, were you just trying to keep me down or you know what I mean? Or or you was it, you know, I, I don't know. You know what I'm saying? Like one of the things that I read about four agreements, I don't like to make assumptions, so I don't even, you know, want to say that's what it was, or he thought I was slow, or I don't know what he thought about me. You know what I mean? But nonetheless, it wasn't going to take me four years or two years or whatever. Well, it I is. mean, I I had the same conversation with my wife the other day, and it's very, very, you know, it, it wears on your nerves when you feel that type of energy because if you feel that what you have to offer is special and somebody else knows that what you have to offer is special and more special than what they have to offer, then they're suppressing your greatness and it's disgusting. And I tell people yeah. all the time, if you feel that somebody is attacking your light, then you leave yeah. immediately. And and, <laughs> I, and, I, and, I, and I will say this, right? Like I said, I don't want to make the assumption, but when I felt that, and that's when I was just like, yo, Jeff, you got to get your broker's license and peace out. You know what I mean? And that's literally, like, I, that's what I did. And it, it was like, like I said, it was just like, yo, what the fuck you doing here? Like, by that time, I'd already learned it. I already knew what to do. And at that time, it was just like, yo, can I do this on my own? You mm-hmm. know, like, get my own office and, like, do this shit. It, it, it was, you know what I mean? It was it was like, it was that time. You know what I mean? It's, it's like, it's almost saying, like, yo, can I run this nine route? With this receiving the safety and catch that route. You, you know can't. I mean? No. You cannot. All you gotta do is try. You never know. You know what I mean? Both dudes might run to each other and the next thing you know, you wide open. Listen, what he just said. <laughs> if I had to paraphrase everything he just said, what you gotta do is fucking fail. And exactly. then try and do it again. Um as I grow older and, and grow into a man, you you always see you know, young kids, and when I say young kids, it's not an age; it's a mindset. Mindset. Young kids is a mindset, and um, oh, the haters is out here. They're hating. I've, 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 I've learned that. Um, as far as the circle that I've created now, and I mean, you heard you were at Tribal last year, so you heard me say it. Everything that's on my social media is me. My, my successes, my failures. I know some people use the shit to just troll and to make jokes, but for me, is is for everybody else to grow into the person that, that they need to become. And, and it's for me to, in turn, be motivated by the people that are in my circle. I could see somebody growing better than me in a location that's better than me. And whereas other people will go, oh, I hate the fact that he's growing. I look at it and say, yo, I'm fucking love the fact that he's growing. And I, I have to, in turn, have conversations, business conversations with that man as to see how he circumnavigated something a certain way so I can motivate myself to get up in the morning and work out in the morning or do business in this way. Just like you followed that man to walk, you know, when he was walking his dog. I want to see how you do this shit and how you can overcome shit that I have issues with. So I'm, I guess I would say to, 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 to frame that into the question is, is do you have kind of motivators that you follow like that? So, um, motivators, I feel like people on social media or like, no, no, no. Or yep. 
It could be anybody. It could be somebody on social media. It could be, your, but uh, in, in turn, more closer to you, like your friends. Like I know, speaking of Jamel in particular, like me and Jamel, we cook shit all the time. We post it on social media. We tag, we tag ourselves. He's taking plating classes. So we, mm-hmm. we, you know, we saying we, it's like a, a competition between each other where I fucking love what he's doing when he puts it out. And in turn, yeah. I, he reciprocates those emotions because we are both looking to grow together. And this stuff that I see that I'm like, man, that was fucking great. I want to try that. No, I mean, bro, like, um, I don't know if you ever, if you heard of this book called, um, uh, Four Agreements, if you ever heard of Four Agreements. No, what is it? Four Agreements. You like, got to read that book. Four Agreements. Four agreements and fifth agreements, right? Um, Nigga, is there a third agreement? Huh? Hold on, is there a third agreement or is it just nah, a, nah, a sixth? It's, it's just it's just four agreements that every everybody should have within themselves. Don't take try your best. Um, don't take anything personal. Don't make assumption. Um, and be impeccable with your words, right? Say what you mean and mean what you you know what you say. Like I think those four agreements, if anybody have them, you know, with within themselves, like it can't like you will be successful if you have legit these four agreements with yourself and anything that you do in life, you go through with life like living by these conditions. And then the fifth agreement is be skeptical, um, but listen to learn. Mm-hmm. So that last one is very important because. Like there's so much you could learn. Like I said, like what you did, what I did ten years ago, can nobody told me that that was the wrong move. That whatever it is, you know what I mean. You couldn't tell me that what I'm doing wasn't right. You know what oh, I'm saying? Word. They got the audio book. I'm gonna grab that for a practical. Yeah. Oh, sorry, let me see what this is. Four agreements, a practical guide to let me maximize this. Personal freedom. Oh shit! Yeah. I'm reading personal that tomorrow. Freedom, bro. A personal like, guide to <laughs> a practical guide to personal freedom. Four agreements. I like it. So the reason I say this is that a lot of us, like, we um, we stop ourselves. You know how people be like, the haters? Like, a lot of the dudes, they're the biggest haters. They they not hate themselves, but, like, they stop themselves. And, like, I will talk to somebody and I'll be like, yo, they'll tell me, like, yo, I want to buy this, I want to buy real estate, I want to do this. And then I'll ask them, like, the two simplest questions, right? Yo, um... The number, like the most important thing, like anybody, anybody in this in America, yeah, you qualify. Like the bank had, the bank wants to give you money to buy real estate. No, they don't want to uh, give me money. money in the bank. <laughs> <laughs> huh? So they don't want to give me money. Oh, 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 yes they do. No, no, yes they do. No, don't don't say that. Yes they do. They want to get like the money is not doing anything in the bank. Like they want to give that loan out. They want that interest. They want that cash flow. They want that return. They want to give the money out. They want to give the money out. Mm-hmm. I mean, they may not want to give it to niggas out, but they want to give that money. Well, out. that's what was my like, point was. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so you need to. So you so tell. You does that book tell me how to get it for us? So no, that's not the book. Is not about that. So what, no, what no. I'm so saying? so in any event, like my wife just told me she has the book, so she's gonna read it to me now. She already oh, okay. has it. Okay, so you need to read that book. So what I'm saying is about that book is that there's some guy like you telling them, hey, you could do this, but they start telling you why they can't do it. They start basically All the being time. their own robot. You know time. what I mean? So that's so that's what that book is. It's like yo, personal freedom. Like I'll talk to some dude. I'm you know like a you know I had at one point I had like seven agents and you know and I'll be like yo, did you do this? Oh, I didn't want this to happen. I didn't want this. Like they would assume all the worst things. To where it's just like yo, all you have to do is just pick up the phone and just ask the owner or the 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 whoever. It is, I, the I, I I can put this in football terms. We we played against a team one time, and it was a fucking fourth and two, so we had a gap blitz in every gap, and before the snap, somebody on our team said he wasn't gonna blitz that gap. So what happened on this fourth and two? A fucking thirty-five yard touchdown run. Up the fucking eight hole that this gap was supposed to be filled in. I said to him, Yo, what the fuck is going on? Like, you're supposed to be in the gap. He goes, Oh, before the snap, I think they saw that I was gonna blitz, so I pulled out. I'm like, Motherfucker, 
I know that's why I'm replacing for where you're supposed to be. So that that logic is exactly the same logic as that you're over. I'm telling you what to do, and I will own the responsibility for your failure. But I'm telling you right now, if you start thinking on your fucking own, then we giving up a 35 yard run on a fourth and two for a touchdown. <laughs> Yo, that's and and that's it's that mentality where reading that book, it, it you know if you read that book, you get it you apply it, you apply these four agreements with yourself. Like, if you tell yourself, yo, I'm gonna go out here and do this today, yo, fucking do it. Oh, I love that. Like, I like, love that be impeccable, yo, <laughs> be impeccable with your words. Like, if if you call me, like, for example, Ray, yo, like, like, yo, this dude today, I had a meeting earlier today, like, this dude, you know, I'm not gonna, you know, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not gonna get upset, but like, he ruined my <laughs> <You> already <day>. did. <laughs> Like he ruined my day because it's like yo the way I like it's like it's it's that being impeccable with your words. You told me to do this today. It was on my calendar. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, All right, I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna do that. All right, I need to do this in order for me to meet with you later on today in my office. You know what I mean? That's why like it was on my I had it on my calendar for five. So when I asked you, it was like oh eight thirty or whatever. And I'm like wow, this was it messed me up. Plus like the dude early, I had a meeting at twelve. He canceled on me, and it was like yo dude I. I hear you, but last night at eight o'clock, and then you said we were on, and you, you know what I'm saying, like. You so yo, that day. so that statement in itself, and um, it's funny you said that because I can see by the text messages that you sent me, like yo, you haven't really, we haven't, you know, done a lot of business together, so, like when I refer to myself, it's the Kong fucking Crete. You can ask Jamel, it's done. They, yeah. they, so when you keep asking me, yo, we still on for today? It's like, motherfucker. Unless we ain't, I'm telling you. So it, it's funny because, cause, you know, my boy TT, we go, we travel a lot. And he don't say a fucking word until he lands. He knows the Airbnb's done. He knows how to get there. And it's like, yo, I, it's one of the most, it's one of the most flattering things in, as far as your reputation. Because it's like, damn, at least he knows that how serious I am about this shit. That he don't have to, have to, have to ask a million questions until it's time to really ask questions. And and yo know, the the shit that really pissed me off irks me is people asking me questions. Like this is this is the reason I can't be a residential agent, right? I can't I because it's like if I do open house and I just oh, I you know the first person walked in and just and I just give you a tour and I answer all the questions and the next person comes in and asks you the same question, <laughs> she's every tip the shit out of me. And then I, like like I said, I realized I'm like, nah, Jeff, like that's part of the job. You're supposed to do that. But I don't like that shit. I remove myself from it. Listen, my wife I, I, my I wife get this, There's a reason I have the even in Tropic Bowl, I have a, a fucking full group chat. I message everybody at the same time. Some people just leave the fucking chat and then they <laughs> want to ask, but I want to ask you questions on the side. But you don't realize how hard I'm working. So you don't understand how much that shit throws me off enough. I, I had already put this answer here. So now I got to go here. Yeah. And then they go, yo, why didn't you tell me? I'm like, bro. I don't know who's in there and who's not. Like everybody, I get it. Everybody wants to feel, you know, more special than the next person. But at the end of the day, you have to understand how fucking hard this initial person's working it and, and do some of your own research to fill these type of questions. Indeed, indeed, indeed. And and same thing too, like right like now, like again, irritate the shit out of me when people go on my DM and ask me like g generic, broad, general That can be answered on Google. Fucking questions, yeah. That could you like ask me questions? It's like yo, what time is it? Yo, <laughs> <laughs> like ooh, you know what I mean? And 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 I realize, and I like now I realize yo why when certain people say yo somebody's is not helping, is not willing to help because I've I've had people that tells me that like yo I don't fuck these dudes, I don't try to help like you know mentors or guys that I talk to. And then like they they be on that like they mad cold shit, but I'm like damn, why are you nice to me? But what I realize is like if I ask these people a question, like I ask them a specific question, you know what I mean? I go to you with something very specific, very detailed, you know what I mean? And it's like it's an easy answer, mm -hmm. right? But when you ask somebody a very generic, broad question, it's just like, yo, where do I start? You know what I mean? And it's like... Because you know how much work is coming after that. You're like, yo, exactly. you don't know this, motherfucker. Exactly. We're talking for three fucking hours. <laughs> exactly. So it's like... So some people who already sees it cut you off from way before. And then you call them an asshole. You call them this and that. It's like, 
it's you. It's your energy. It's the dumb shit that you say. It's you not being specific. You not, you know what I'm saying? Like come in, you know, very direct and in, in, in talking to people. Girl, there's been so many people that I've went on their LinkedIn, the Instagram, and then like I wouldn't even think of these people like high end position CEOs fucking out like it's like I be in their office sometimes I'm like, yo, why are you talking to me? Like legit, I be asking myself that sometimes. Sometimes I'm talking to you, I'm like, yo, why are you talking to me? But reason why you're talking to me is the value that I bring in, right? Is is the question that I ask them or or what I offer, right? I offer you something, it's like that saying, give us gain. Mm-hmm. If I give you something, it's like it's like you, you gotta give me something back. At least your time. At least, you know what I mean? My question yeah, I mean Exactly. I, I I think I've told this story a couple times. Like I'm, I was doing security in downtown in St. Petersburg, and there used to be a dude that come every weekend. He's a millionaire. He has like six different locations where he brings the most blue crab into the Tampa area, and he used to just come and talk to me and talk to my boy that was working there for like hours at a time. And I looked at him like, Yo, what are you? Why are you talking to me? And it always used to be like, yo, but, you know, I like the way you think. And I'm just like, are you fucking hiring? Because now you're trying to take thoughts out of my mind, successful thoughts out of my mind. You know what I'm saying? And um, you could be out here trying to pick up women or something because he was just here talking to me. And I'm just like, yo, bro, like, this is Saturday night. I don't want to fucking be here. <laughs> and that's what it comes down to at, at the end of the day. Um. Do you feel like real estate is for everybody? And if you don't, who thrives in it more than other people? Um, uh, real estate is not for everybody because um, the reason I'm the reason I'll say this is that um, there's certain skills like real estate is so broad, like it's for everybody. Let me not say that. That anybody could anybody could 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 do things in real estate, right? But to be successful, to be like a top producing agent, to be like to really make money in real estate, it takes certain it takes creativity, it takes grind, relentless, it takes it takes a lot it's like it's the same shit like yo, for LeBron James being LeBron, bro. It takes same shit Jerry Rice being the number one, being those guys. Like the shit that a lot of people do. Hey, 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 I was do. with you for LeBron James. What? Uh, what do you mean Jerry Rice number one? I'm just saying, like, yo, the hard work, the work, the the, you know, what I'm saying, like, putting that that mentality, like, putting that work, putting that being consistent, like, every year, you know, what I'm saying, like, mm-hmm. learning, studying, training, like that, like. I mean, when it comes that, to that, you know, who the person I always refer to, and I fucking don't like him, is Floyd Mayweather. I don't like Floyd yeah. Mayweather as a person, but as a I fucking boxer, as a machine. I, I, I can't I can't speak on Floyd like, kind of like this. Thing. I don't I don't I, I I know he works, but I don't I can't speak on I don't speak on what I don't know. I don't know his work ethic, so I can't speak on it. I speak on on work ethic I've seen. Oh, you know I see. What I mean? got you. So that's what I'm. So that's the reason I just said those names. It, it's that same work ethic, where it's like yo, there are some days, bro. Like I'm here watching you know on YouTube watching you know watching a bunch of videos, and I'm like, damn, it's fucking three in the morning. What the fuck? But like you know what I mean? It's, it's a conversation I'm having with myself. And it's just like, yeah, I gotta go to bed. It's three a.m. I gotta go to bed. You know what I mean? Um, it's me going to this, these, these seminars, and I'm like the only black dude in here. Like, what the fuck am I? You know what I mean? Like me having these conversations. Why am I here? But like, before this, before the seminar ends, somebody will say something that I didn't know, and I'm like, oh, so that's how this is. Oh, that's what this is. Oh, I meet this guy, then I send him a deal, or I, I give him a call, or he tells me, yo, he got this, he got that, and it's a network, you know what I'm saying, and it's making something happen. So, it's it's certain, like if you want to be the best at every, in anything that you do, there's a lot of work that you got to put in. And I feel yeah, what you just said. I feel like people see the end result and feel like everything just came easy. They don't yeah. they don't understand that you're watching you know YouTube videos at, at three fucking a.m. on everything is is self improvement and I try to tell you know anybody that I'm mentoring or my kids the same shit is like yo everything that I do is a work in progress even when yeah. I'm cooking when I'm you know doing business or any aspect of selling which I mean when it comes to selling I don't think there's a lot of people in the world that can fuck with me and I still do research on it <laughs> so uh-huh. that's a whole other thing. I was watching. I forgot what I, I mean. It was be. I was. I forgot what I was watching, and um, I learned that Jordan had a coach, right? 
And I forgot what I was watching. I learned he had a coach. And then the dude dropped a book called Relentless. Or oh, the book was already out. And I found out I found about I found out about the book and I read that book. And Tim Tim Grover, that's a I don't know if you never read that book, you need to read that book, bro. Um My motivation level is on a thousand. I'm actually writing a book, so yeah, I, no, I, I was I, writing a book and then I started and I said, "Yo, let me, let me make a podcast so I can clear my head so that I can be able to write a book." <laughs> I, I I listen, I listen. I mean, I, I audio book. My, I, I mean, I don't necessarily sit there and read a book. Audio mm-hmm. book while I'm working out, driving, you know, my bike. Yep. This is the reason, like now, like I mean, I, I started, you know, biking just because I'm like I'm gonna bike for like an hour and a half, two hours. I'm gonna listen to a book and get it out the way. You know what I mean? Um, I'm not gonna run. I'm not gonna be running. For that long, I'm not gonna be at the gym. People's gonna ask me, "Yo, can I spot you?" Da da da, and interrupt me. I want spin be class, locked. baby. Yeah, I got two spin bikes. That's what it's all yeah. about. It's an hour straight of listening to an audio book and dying. Exactly same. That's what I'm saying. Like, yo, doing that. So when I listen to Relentless, bro, like this dude was basically talking about Jordan talking about having a coach, and that same coach worked with Dwayne Wade, and I was like, nah, I need me a coach. So I basically got me a, a business coach and a professional coach. It's the best thing I ever did. Why? Because it's it's like it's kind of like the same thing if you have a basketball coach, right, or a football coach. You know what I mean? Hey, work on your stand, work on your explosiveness, work on your. You know what I mean? You could do it, but like imagine if you had a, somebody that's telling you, you know what I'm saying, how to improve on that on a daily basis. Yo, just for that, I think it was about two to three months having her. You know what I mean? It, again, like made me see things differently. Like even like I mentioned to you, um, we had a networking event. Um, and again, the awareness actually, the awareness, right? So we, you know, like I said, I, I just got the sweat on, right? So I'll go to networking events, you know, whatever, just throw a sweat on. And she, and I end up inviting her to an event, and she, I pulled, um, she pulled me to the side, and she was like, "You, Jeff, you know, a little older lady too." She was like, "Jeff, look at all the gen- look at all the men around here. Everybody got on a suit and blazer. The fuck you got on? You know what I mean, like." And not she didn't say what the fuck you got on. She was like, Yo, you gotta represent better or something like that. Some some along she, those lines. She said what the fuck you got on. Just she in said, different words. <laughs> yeah, exactly. What the fuck you got. And then when I looked up again, we we in we in the in the professional business setting where we all here networking, trying to get business on a higher end, talking about million dollars. The way you present yourself matters, right? And then I was like, I, I was like, damn, yo, you right. You know what I'm saying? And I saw it. I'm like, damn, you right. Every dude in here was really sharp with their blazer. And then again, these are things that I have at home. But I'm like, I just want to be fucking comfortable. Yo, I don't want to be wearing a blazer and a shirt. Well, I mean, you know, per- I- personally, I'm, I'm I'm skipping that. I'm not doing that. I, I yeah. Mean, that's me. I'm not selling real so, estate. And obviously, yeah. I'm not super rich either. But I'm going to do that aspect of it my way but just to put it in a different perspective that's not saying I don't have coaches yeah. I don't have people that I rely on for advice um, Kanye West actually on one of his albums brought in Rick Rubin for that exact reason so Kanye West who people think of as you know one of the highest egos in the fucking world still brought in Rick Rubin to yeah, tell him bro. yo this shit's done stop <laughs> yeah. you, it, yo bro you need that because I'm gonna tell you right I'm gonna tell you why that like the reason I'm saying this to you, right? Literally, like either two days later or within that same week, um, I went to I had another event I was going to, and I remember I remember getting to the event like maybe a little late or whatever it is, and I had my blazer on. I remember like oh shit, I had my pocket square, and I walked in, bro, and I remember like your eyes on me, right? And I remember people were looking at me, right? And I had like three different people come up to me and you know what I'm saying just start just started wanted to start conversation with me. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Just like it's just like again, it's so like that, that, you're saying that was the difference of showing up with a sweater versus showing up with an exactly. ascot and a pocket square. I didn't have an ascot. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, I had I, I will ask you. I gotta ask you. I was like, what the fuck was I? Yo, I gotta ask you. I went to a club. I went to a Boston club with like, you know what I mean? With ask I'm like, yo, Jeff, who are you? What are you? I don't think there's any club in the fucking <laughs> world that you could go to with ask God on. Absolutely not, bro. But for whatever reason, I feel like that day I needed it, yo. So, um, but yeah, I, I, after that that conversation with her and and me noticing that and, and noticing that. People came in, kept coming up to me, come, having that conversation. You know what I mean? And it was, I was like, wow, like, you know, 
presentation matters. First impression matters. You know what I mean? Yeah. Nonetheless. But I'll tell you, right? So I got I got this thing, especially like now with, with, with winter coming around. Bro, like when, once winter come around, I got a I got a nice top coat on, bro. Sweatpants and shoes, bro. Listen, I call that I call that bum classy. That's my look that I go in any meetings with, bro. I go to closing with sweatpants and a top coat. Cause you can't see nothing but just the bottom. And up here, mm-hmm. I got. I put. I put a scarf on. You don't know if I got a t-shirt. <laughs> I. I would. I. I've gone to closing with my freaking Spartan t-shirts on, with a nice top coat on, and a sweater, like looking very professional with some nice sneaker shoes on. You even know what I got on. You know what I mean? Um. So you know, I, as far as that, like, like I said, it it it, beca- it basically just become with awareness. You know what I mean? Knowing where you're going, knowing who's gonna be there, and knowing how to present yourself. You know what I'm saying? That's that's just what it is. You're not gonna go to to the you know you go to go you get invited to you know you a rapper you get invited to the BT award. You know what I'm saying? You know how to go to BT awards versus the Golden Globes versus the Oscars. You know what I mean? It's it's just that difference. You know what I mean? I don't fuck like with any of them. I don't, like not to say, I'm just using I'm just using that. Like, no, I get I get what you're saying. You know what I mean? I, I mean, de- I speak in terms of uh you know just a barometer of of, of kind of what society is looking at and what they think of it yeah. is because I refuse to live by those standards and um even speaking to those coaches I mean when those situations come about my wife is number one I'm like yo what do you think about this what do you think about this design and then after that I, I release it to you know my circle of people in which I trust and mm-hmm. we're I'm not trying to I'm trying to where we're trying to move up together like we're trying to move up so that we all have an ability and kind of a higher foundation to pull mm-hmm. everybody up to. And anytime I tell, you know, young men about shit like that, it's like, yo, you can't help anybody until you have a pro- a foundation to pull people up to. Stop pulling people up if you yeah. cuz you just going to fucking keep falling down. You you standing in quicksand trying to pull people up. It's the same shit with like, you know, you can't pour you can't pour an empty cup. You can't pour a half empty cup like until your shit is like your cup is pouring out, is dripping. Then you tell people, yo, you know, pour your cup and take whatever's falling off. But you, whatever's in here, you can't cut, you can't pour it. If whatever's in here, you start pouring it, you're not gonna have anything. Mm-hmm. Like you need to make sure yours, you get so much that's pouring into yours, and then it's just falling off. Then you tell people like, yo, come get this abundance that I can't handle. Listen, you know what I mean? listen. If y'all want to be rich like Jeff, you got to drink Pone Spring. I, I'm not rich. This, this is you know CVS water. <laughs> so, okay, so start with gold. Go to it gold emblem. Start with gold emblem water, <laughs> and then we can move from there. So but, um, go ahead. No, like honestly, it's you know those those one of the things that um, when I mentioned this to you is that again awareness, right? Um, certain, certain places that I go to that again as I'm going to because it's, it's because you have to you know you go in there. It's like there's standards, you know what I mean? You got to meet the standards. But at the same time, you know, for example, like, I, you know, I'm going to, I, I work at a company. If I'm going, if I work there, I got to apply by what, you know, the dress code. But if I have my own company, I set yeah, the dress code. Yeah, your own dress code, code. exactly. You know what I mean? I set the dress code. So, again, it's like, if it's yours, you can do whatever you want. But if it's not yours, you can't do whatever you want. I can't be like, yo, Ray, come to my wedding, and then you just show up with shorts and chancletas. It's like, yo, bro, I mean, I understand you do that shit at your wedding. You be showing up to my wedding like that. Don't invite me to your shit, nigga, because yo, I had to do chancletas coming to, out, baby. I had a dude show up to my wedding like that, yo. I'm like, yo, my man, yo, you notice everybody, I, you know what I'm saying? You know everybody over here got this on, and you got on shorts with, with both shoes, bro? Like, You was mad about that? No, I didn't give a fuck. I was in Jamaica. Your wife, Your like, wife was mad about it. Absolutely. Because that's what it, exactly. Because listen, I don't give a fuck. You I can come to my shit whatever because what you come as is it. I'm judging you on your human spirit. That's it. If you exactly. were fucking there, that means more than anything. Because there's that, niggas that are sitting at home with a tuxedo on. She brought that shit up to me. I was like, yeah, I don't give a fuck. Yeah, it was a fun time. See this cake. But you remember Clarence in the 45th minute of this video? Why the fuck do you have on some Air Jesus ones? <laughs> I was like, yo, come on, man. I'm like, I don't care about that, yo. Whatever people are doing right now is what they're doing, man. So, I um, mean, um, moving into this, uh, to, to the next question, and 
If anybody that's listening and likes what they hear, listen on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, YouTube, Facebook, and Perfect Audio. YouTube and Perfect Audio. And you can share this shit right now. Share it right now. Um, you may be like the only person I've seen that came to the football team when we had it and kept their nickname. Well, um, well, I mean, even with the, the with the with the fake punt that you ran against that Philly team that you did on your own, yo. I don't know what that was, but where did the name Six Mills come from? Six Mills. I, it's a, it, I, I mean, it, it's a football name. It actually came from um, college. It was in college. It was my. It was the same thing as you know, play off people's last name when when I was at Kirby. I think that's everybody pretty much had um, you know. Um, what do you call it? Had a nickname. Somebody that nickname was a uh, was a play off their last name. Um, so I forgot this dude. Well, his not his his last name was Pero, so we call him Big Bird. So I think he's the one that started calling me Six Mill. Well, what? Mil- what? Mil- what? How did that work? Because he was a big ass white boy with fucking yellow hair. <laughs> but what is <laughs> Pero? Yeah. That didn't make sense for that story. What the hell? <laughs> I was just not lame. We got this dude named last name Campbell. We call him Soup. You know what I mean? So, I think, yo, you know what? I think we were just a more creative ass team. Because were you there when Rito was there on our team? Rito, Rito, Rito. You know who fucking um, Rito's like fucking famous on Instagram? Rito Brown. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I know when. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you yeah, know yeah, he was yeah. on I the course, Ravens? Yeah. Yeah, I know when Rito was there. Absolutely. I didn't even know he was fucking funny because we had so many people that was yo, funny. That's what I tell people all the time. Yo, I was like, I was like, yo, the only thing that was funny about Rito is just like, like you could say anything to him, he always had a comeback. Like it, he was. But that was like, everybody. That was solid. That, yeah, that was Bama. That was, our fucking coach is viral. Donnie's yo, viral. Yo, this dude. <laughs> like, yeah, yo, like, yeah, we 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 had a lot of. Well, actually, my, my my name changed. So, my 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 football name over there was LL. It wasn't Six oh, Mill. Oh yeah, it was, I remember that. Six Six Mill became my actual name. <laughs> <laughs> like yo, some people may not even know my name was my real name is Jeff. You know what I mean? So like, yeah, Six Mill became my name, and then um, Donnie started calling me LL. And it's funny because like, I think like Keon. There's like a few dudes like out. Keon, like, Keon's you know, in the comments laughing right now. So be yeah, careful because he might come to your house and hit you right now. No, with equipment I, on. I was saying Keon was like the last <laughs> dude. I think I was at Jamel. Was it? I forgot earlier this year. Or last, I was at Jamel's house, and then he called me LL three times, and then my wife was like, "Yo, who's LL?" <laughs> <laughs> and then, uh, and I was laughing. Oh like, shit! <laughs> I I don't remember the last time who called me like. The last time I got LL was probably when we were um, in Costa Rica. Mm-hmm. So that was the last time, like, you know, whoever was down there yep. called me LL. But, like, on a reg, I don't, you know, anybody that I see that, you know, from football called me six mil or mils or whatever it is. Mm-hmm. And LL, that was the last, like, last time I got LL was from Keon. And I was, like, really just, like, laughing in my head, like, yo, I haven't heard that in a minute. <laughs> and then she was like, yo, who the fuck is LL? Like, yo, that's mine. He was this nigga that he had an old Mercedes and he had Gucci headrest. Oh, he, I, I love was that guy. I had to give her a story <laughs> on that, yo. She was hilarious, yo. <laughs> but yeah, um, that yeah, that 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 name came from from basically, you know, at Curry, just dudes, you know what I mean? Same thing, basically, you know, he just calling dudes different names or whatever it is. And like, I was like, fuck it, that's thick. And I actually, Yo, put that on my headrest. I actually, end up putting it on my headrest. That's actually that's where the name really stick because I end up putting it on my headrest. It was on that's the headrest. It, it was on the Gucci headrest. You had yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, I yeah, remember man. that. Yo, mom, yo, it, it was funny, yo. A lot of people thought I paid a lot of money for that, yo. It's crazy. No, I told you at the time. So when I was in high school, I actually made Burberry Tim's for people. I had a shitload of yeah. fabric, and we started a country making. And I, I remember saying to you, yo, I, I can get you the fabric if you want to do more of that shit. But you were like, I got a guy. And yeah. it's whatever. That's fine. You know what I'm saying? As we moved on, we, we looked at it in, in, in different ways. Um, it's funny because when people see that video of Donnie, the arena shit, they're like, yo, that. have you ever seen this dude? This video is crazy. Yo, you got to understand, like, you, I have three different things about my life that are world encapsulating conversation. Like, I was in Washington, D.C. during 9-11. The fucking marathon bombing ended four minutes from my house. Mm. The Aaron Hernandez shit. 
The dude, yeah. play, he got, the car was at our game that night. That's number one. And then the fourth thing would be fucking Donnie. So when people show me that video, they go, yo, you ever seen this coach? This dude's insane. I go, yo, that's my coach. And they're like, what? I'm like, yo, that I that I got insane like that every fucking practice. Yo. Not just one viral video. <laughs> yo. Whew. Yeah. I, I, don't even, I don't even think Donnie yelled at me when I did the fake punt. I think he just looked at me. If anything, he probably let it off later on. But... I don't even think I got a handful after the game. I mean, during during that play, he just gave me the look was enough. Look was enough. I'm, I'm mentioning that look right now. The look was enough. I don't remember if he said anything to me, you know, but look was enough. But that was Donnie, the game, like, I can't yeah. remember because that was the game. No, the, so that was the game we lost because they had the hot rods at halftime and all types of bullshit going on. And then the yeah, game yeah. we won, they cheated us. I believe so. Um. So yeah, I don't. Yeah. Donnie, go ahead. I told my I told my wife like when I showed that shit to my wife, she she was scared. And I was like, I was like, I love it. I was like, I love this shit. I was like, I love this shit. That's yes. What is this? Absolutely hilarious. Absolutely I'm hilarious. Oh, I'm got... a little busy right now. Come on, man. We doing perfect podcast, man. We ain't got oh, time for mean, business you... at seven thirteen. We got business exactly. at seven thirty five. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know who's not going to do it. They're trying but to yeah. clean out the trash, man. I don't know what's going on here, but yeah, man. Um, what were we talking about? Yeah, Donnie. Yeah, Don. Donnie was the guy. Donnie is the guy. So, four more questions for tonight. No question. Number one: What is successful to you? Success to you is living life on your own terms, bro. Doing what they doing, whatever you want. You know, like I, when I mean. Living, doing whatever you want is like really living, ter- living life on your own terms, um, like living that to to the fullest, to the fullest of. The, I mean, being able to do things to the fullest of your abilities. Um, I think like I don't, I don't put monetary as having a lot of money or anything like that because one of the few things that I've realized, like I went to Dubai and I went to Mexico, and well, Dubai, nigga, you can take gold out the ATM. That's just uh, no way other place in the world you can do that. <laughs> so, just just being out there, but like, like living living those lives, doing whatever you want. It doesn't it doesn't need you. Doesn't need to have like billions and millions of dollars. You know what I'm saying? It's it's literally like having no debt and having cash flow. I love that because I mean that 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 perfectly walks me into my next question, which is what is rich to you? Like. Having no no debt and having cash flow, being able to like, if I walk in here and I could just do whatever, I could buy whatever I want and just be able to do whatever I want. What is, like, is there? So like right now, like for instance, with the so when I talked to that dude that had the bunch of crab places, he was like, I got, I get it now, and I have so many locations, I have money, but I can't stop, and I don't trust anybody to one run one of the businesses. And I go, well, when you started this shit, was there a monetary value that you were like, I got to get to this, and then I'm good? Because right now. All you did was still put yourself in a rat race, but with money. I know people that have way more money than me haven't traveled anywhere because yeah. they're still stuck making money. Exactly. So exactly, some people they they get you know um, they get tied up you know just just you know when that's all they want to do is make money, make money. Um, like for me, I'm like money is a tool. Money is a tool that you need to learn how to use that tool and have that tool make you more money. I mean, you know, have that tool basically just get you more tools. You know what I mean? Um, so for me, it's not I need to have billions and trillions of dollars because, you know, the other day I was watching the um, I was watching the, um, something on um, on Netflix on the the owners of H and M, and and I thought about where they at right now. So a bunch of H and Ms are closing down. I'm like, Yo, I don't want, I don't I don't want those problems. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? I'm like I, I don't need those problems, and, and I understand those problems. So those problems, uh, it's when you in that mindset of, you know, like I said, um, ch- what you just said, like chasing money and saying, okay, we need to grow, we need to, you know, we need to have 15, you know, like for example, H and M. I think they have like 15, 1500 stores worldwide or whatever it is. You know what I mean? When 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 you in that mission, that mission is a lot, you know. You got to get in. You have to get in a lot of debt to get that to get you know to be able to you know to reach that that level. So 
does is that debt worth it to you? Is the the money worth it to you? Is this is it that success? Mm-hmm. So for me, it, it's it's that's not what I'm chasing. You know what I mean? Like to be like, yo, I'm trying to be the biggest dispensary in the world. I'm trying to be the biggest brokerage in the world, or you know what I mean? Things like that. So um, my focus and my goal is is again is it's just being having my uh, financial freedom. Being able to create life and create, you know, opportunities for people around me. Um, it's educating and leveling up the next generation, um, and educating people and let them know that they could do those things. and And that's that's really what that is to me. Like as far as like success and and you know being successful, it's just re- literally just me being being able to live on my terms. Damn! I, listen, I would have ended the episode on that, but I got a couple more questions. Fuck y'all. So if you can see the comments, this is fucking hilarious. <laughs> Rory goes, I remember someone asked me about Alex. I was like, who the hell is Alex? <laughs> she was like, you play football with him. <laughs> and he goes, I don't have any Alex on our team. <laughs> touche. Oh, touche, touche is yeah. Alex. <laughs> but we gave motherfuckers names that was yeah. their name. Yo, tr- yo, it's funny. It's funny. Same thing. Uh, yo, it took me two days. To tell my to find out to tell my wife um Touche's name, bro. Cause we we were we were hanging out with Jamel and then um And Jamel's and related we, to him and still yeah, call so him Touche. Yeah, so I'm calling <laughs> so I'm calling him Touche, I'm calling him Touche. So we get home later and my wife was just like da 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 um with Jamel's cousin, what's his name again? And I'm like I'm like Touche. Um she was like, No. Yo, like I was thinking, I'm like, shit. Can I even go on my? Fi- uh, I'm like, okay. If I go on Instagram, Facebook, I don't even know what to look for. You know what I mean? It's just like, yo. I'm trying to send him a mail document. I'm well, to, you like, better send yeah, that I, shit to Touche. I couldn't. Find, I couldn't find the name, bro. I, I, it took it, it literally the next day. I was like, Alex, and she's like, Yeah, Alex. And I'm like, if Jamel's calling him that shit, his name is Touche. Like, <laughs> so it's funny with the rich story, it, like. I ran into this this week. Somebody messaged me, and and like I said, I'm fucking broke right now. But um, somebody was like, "Yo, we're going to Costa Rica next month." He's like, "But our hotel that we usually stay at is closed. What's going on?" So I, I, the owner P talks to me throughout the entire year at the hotel, and he said mm-hmm. to me, um, "I go, yeah, I'm coming in next Friday, so I can get an idea of what the entrance policy is like, so I can tell my my, you know, everybody that's coming." what to expect when they go there and he goes well oh okay you come with everybody else I go are you open he goes no but he, are you coming with everybody cause I'll open and I said the text back to him I go listen they're gonna open for me <laughs> which is crazy that's not an amount of money that creates that that is an amount of respect and an amount of creating yes a proper business relationship over time as to where you walk in. I remember I went back to Boston. I went back to this breakfast place, and the person that was in the front was like, I was like, hey, I got three more coming. She's like, okay, well, you have to wait for the three until you sit down. But it's a place I've went many times and, and tip everybody well and know the owner. But I wasn't going to, you know, pull the flex move on the new girl. So mm-hmm. then another dude walked by and was like, well, what's up, man? I was like, yeah, I'm just here in town. I'm having dinner. He goes, why aren't you sitting down? I mean, having breakfast. He goes, why aren't you sitting down? I go, I'm waiting for three other people. And she said, I had to wait for the other people. This motherfucker literally said, fuck her. Come sit down. And I'm like, all right, if that okay. is what it is, what it is, what it is. That's not a monetary amount. That's just understanding and respecting people around you. And, and make sure you take care of the people that you know are helping you get to the places that you need to get. So when people don't tip, I don't fuck with them at all. <laughs> so that with with what you just said, yo, um, it's like that. Um, I'm sure you've seen that um, that question. You know, a clip they had, they asked Bob Marley, or oh, are you a rich man? Um, do you do you have a lot of money? And I forgot the question. He's like, rich. What's rich to you? You know what I mean? Is it a lot of money? Is it friends? Is it relationship? And that's really what it is, yo. Um, like my dad, like I went I went back. Um, I had a um, one of my fathers, you know, he's like uh, my second cousin, but it's like you're a real good friend with my dad. So in Haiti, they had a business. So he passed away 2018. Mm-hmm. 2018. So my dad's like 61, and I didn't want my dad. And then like that was like his best friend, business partner. So I didn't want him to go down there on his own. So I was like, yo, Papa, I'm going to go with you. You know what I mean? I'm like, I haven't been down there. Last time I went to Haiti was like 03, I think. So I'm like, I haven't been down there in 
long time, so let me go back home with you, right? And I remember 03 when I went there, it was just like the love that I was getting from like man people just off the strength, like it was my dad, I was my dad's son. And I was like, well, you know, who are these people like offering me stuff or whatever it is, being nice, being nice to me. I didn't, I didn't, you know what I mean? I, at that time, I didn't understand. I think I was like 16 then. So when I went back, you know, this time around, and I saw that the camaraderie, the love that, you know, people just like, basically just like rolling the red carpet for my dad. And it was just off respect and basically paying it forward and, you know what I'm saying, like give his game, like, you know, things he's done for people. And I'm looking at my dad's not by, you know, he's not rich by any, by, by any means. But like, yo, we got down there, it was just like somebody picked us up. You know, anything we need, it was getting taken care of. You know what I mean? And it wasn't like, yo, he's coming out of pocket every time paying anybody. It was just off the strength. Like, yo, I'm just doing this because that's just him. You know what I mean? And like, it, it was just like, that's when I'm like, yo, that, that saying, like Bob Marley said, it was just like, Yo, this dude really just came down here and barely spent any money, and everything got done. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, like I slept. I'm like, yo, he's like, yo, you need this? I'm like, yeah, I need that. Right, I'll, I'll send somebody, boom, boom, and somebody came and got me. So, you know what I mean? Anything I needed, it was just like, it was getting done. But it wasn't no, you know, like getting done on like, you know, you know, limo or nothing like that. It was just like the 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 pickup. You know what I mean? Like help your ass in the back of the pickup truck and get to your destination. But it was just like, oh shit, most people who have to walk their ass here. But you know what I mean? So it it, it was, you know what I'm saying? Like, it was as real as as it get. But it just make you realize, like, yo, you only have, like being rich. It doesn't. It's not a monetary value. It's just like having the resources, having the you know the connection, and having the people to just you know respect for people to get these things in for you as you need it. In a timely manner, and that's all it is. I, what I say to everybody is the ability to control my time and stop giving it to nonsense that I don't want to give it to. Because there's a lot mm. of giving your time to nonsense when you want to really give it to the people that you care about more. For sure. Um, two questions left in the night, and I mean, at this point, I constantly try to explain to younger men and, and explain to to my kids about actually investing to yourself uh, investing in yourself and they think that there's you know a lot that that a short money that forty dollars is a lot of money you know what i'm saying versus you know actually taking it all and putting it on yourself people are scared to do that people are scared to, uh, to to look in the mirror and say you know what i really believe that i'm going to accomplish this and i'm going to you know give everything that i have into it so with that being said um what is the biggest investment that you've made in your future yo um it's funny as you had just asked because i was about to i was about to cut you off and say and say but that's you, you know you said that honestly yo, my biggest investment the biggest investment that i've like i've made personally bro is actually vacation mm -hmm. the biggest the biggest investment is actually removing yourself from your surrounding and going to see other things going to see how other people live going to see how things are being operated besides where what you thought you know what I mean like I'll give you an example right again coming from Haiti and just moving out to America and started watching TV watching Fresh Prince sister sister these shows right yo I thought life everywhere is the same way what I saw on television right so I live in Dorchester and I, I live and I go to school in West Roxbury it's like I gotta take two trains I gotta get dropped off pop on a bus Go through this whole Who process, you was right? there with Keith? Keith, where? At West Roxbury. Keith who? Uh, he's younger than me. He's younger than me. I think he he came after me. Oh, okay. So you know who he is? Yeah, yeah, I think uh, I know who you're talking about. The motherfucker that gets banned from Facebook every week. Take that, <laughs> Keith. <laughs> no, no, I I don't I think he's younger than me, but I wasn't there with him. I think um I grad who did I graduate with? That's on the team that we played with. And West Roxbury. I'm trying I to think, think who else was at Westy. Then then didn't Titi go to Westy? Mm. He might have, but I think he. he I, I don't. Where the yeah. fuck? Where the and fuck then, is TT? I, I, he lives in Weymouth, but I don't know where the fuck he played at. I think TT went to Westy. Um, like that, I know there's a few dudes that, um, on the team that I. That, um, well, um, no, he's not. He don't play on the team. Dang, I forgot who. There's a few dudes that play on the team. Okay. Um, I know that I went to Westy with. I I can't remember on top of my head, but nonetheless, um, what I was saying is that. I, I was under the impression that like the whole world is like the same way, you know what I mean? Until like I, I moved to Milton, and I mean I moved to Milton. I'm in seeing like you know kids go walking in Milton's kids just walking to school, 
And I was like, oh shit, there's a different world out here. It's not the same. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like what you see here, what what you see on TV is not the same. So it wasn't until like I like I said, me started going on vacation and seeing different things and like you know what I mean, and and it, it gives me a motivation to say, yo, yo, you want to do this more, so you got to come home and figure shit out so you can get out of here. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So and, and and explore and see more. And like I said, the more I see, it was just like, yo, I don't need a lot of money to do this. You know what I mean? I just need to like now when I come back, I don't have to worry about going back to work and making money to do this again to pay bills and paying catch up. And I'm like, that's all I gotta eliminate. If I could eliminate this shit. I could do this shit all day. Ha I mean? Listen, Haas is in the comments. He said he went to Westy, so fuck Westy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just playing. Um, the question, what is the biggest investment you've made in your future? The biggest investment? I just told you, me spending money to go on vacation. How much money, motherfucker? Like, you do, you spend I mean, a certain amount of money a year? So, so basically, because like, I, I said the same thing. Uh, if, go ahead. You want me to tell you like a monetary value? No, no, you don't have to tell me a monetary value. So it's more of making sure that you set time. Because for me, vacation is that you, you know, have to reset your mind yeah. and set time for yourself to take on the rest of that, you know, year. If I didn't have vacations, I might lose my fucking mind. Exactly. That's what I mean. So it, it's that it's getting it's you getting that part and also being able to see a different part of the world and knowing like, wow, if this is like this, I wonder what over there is like. You know what I mean? Like being in Costa Rica, I wonder what Cuba's like. I wonder what St. Kitts is like. I wonder what, you know, these other islands are. And so I think from the first time when we came back, from the first time I, we went down to um, Costa Rica, since then I've been to a bunch of different islands to mm -hmm. the point that I'm like, yo, I got married in Jamaica. You know what I mean? Yep. So that's what I mean. It was just like and I it makes me feel like wow, I could legit like island hop. You know what I mean? Just like people be like, yo, yeah. I'm bar hopping. You know what I mean? It's just like yo, you I know I what you listen, I I I I'm, you know I'm, I'm I mean? pretty sure you haven't seen every episode, but I know what you mean that I I literally threw a barbecue in Costa Rica and then we had uh maybe fifty people show up to and fifty people that I consider, you know, to be family at this point um, I don't think people anybody told you when you were younger that you could hey you could go to another country and meet people that you consider family and throw a barbecue and 50 people I don't even know 50 well I know and for a fact 50 people sh wouldn't show up in Florida I could throw a barbecue in Massachusetts and 50 people throw show up and fucking Rory who's in the comments can throw a barbecue and 7,000 people will show up Jesus Christ I was at that shit one time and I was like damn you weren't joking um, mm. and I figured you were going to have an answer like that. So the next question and the last question of the night would be, what is the biggest risk that you've taken up to this point that paid off to get where you are? Damn, yo. I've taken a lot of risks, bro. Every day is a risk. Um, okay, that's the answer, everybody. Have a good night. <laughs> <laughs> yo, le yo, legit, legit, legit. Every day is a risk, bro. Like in this business, it's like, yo, every day is now, a risk. So I ain't even talking about this business. I'm talking about you know, your um, life. So yeah, obviously, I mean, there was a jump where you became mad, and a jump where you became something else, and a jump that you feel that you need to take to to, to go to the next level. Um, let me see. Um. Uh, so I, like so I so why are you thinking? I'll give you you know in my idea, I have friends that were in the Olympics. I have friends that you know that are very successful in business, and they still look at kind of what Tropic Bowl has become, and they go, "Yo, how the fuck did you do that?" You know what I'm saying? That's crazy that you got this yeah. much people. And to me, it's still like, "Yo, I haven't even gotten any real deal financial support yet to really take it to the next level." So I said to them. You got to understand that the first year we had a Tropic Bowl meeting and we had 16 people at the meeting that paid. And I said to myself, shit, I don't know if that's enough to fill the team. So mm -hmm. I'm just going to say that it's not going to happen this year. No Tropic mm -hmm. Bowl this year. Everybody went home. I refunded everybody their money. The next year, I said, yo, we're doing Tropic Bowl again. We have five people that signed up. Five. I said, yo. I don't give a fuck what happens. I'm going there no matter what so I can get a lay of the land of what's going on. That's one of the biggest risks I've taken in terms of what this thing has become. I mean, I've taken countless other risks, but specifically speaking to this event, we went there with 
because the fifth person dropped off. We went there with four people, and um, when we went there, we were still able to frame a game, which is Tropic Bowl one. And um, meet people that were able to kind of bring in other people. So when we were able to take pictures in the next year, I think we had about 20. And then we average about 45 to 60 from, from year to year, depending on kind of what people say. So it's become what it's become, you know, because of the ability to take that initial risk. Like, for instance, I'm going there next Friday just to be able to explain to the, you know, 40 guys that are coming, yo, this is what you should expect going forward where somebody else would go and watch everybody get picked off as they get there. No, you don't have this, you don't have this, you don't have this. I'm going to take that hit for y'all to let you know, yo, this is what you should expect when you get there so you can go forward. Indeed. So um, with that being said, I would probably say, you know, me opening up my brokerage firm, Mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Um, uh, Probably me taking that risk. Um, But kind of like so with with tropic bowl you know we 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 approaching on on the 10th year right so i'm on my fourth year of me having my office um well still third year i just i just wrap up three years in august right um so my biggest risk was was me literally telling my um the broker that i was working with at that moment well um it wasn't working out. I knew that I was. I wanted to leave. I wanted to leave that that firm and just like do my own thing. Cause like I like at that time, I was just like, yo, uh, this dude just want to broker commercial deals. And for me, I was just like, yo, I want to do more. Like I'm not rich. I like you know this dude came. He came from a wealthy family, so it's just he just got to support himself. You know what I mean? And his family. I'm like, yo, I got people in Haiti. I got I got that calls me. I just got two calls over here. Yo, dudes asking me for money and shit. Right, so I got people that that's calling me from all over, families or whatever that depends on me, and like so I can't just do I can't just broker commercial deals. I'm like I gotta do more. I gotta get into flipping. I gotta get into you know owning business and doing different things. And I was explaining like yo, we could expand into Boston, into Mattapan, get a second office, boom, boom, boom. And then he wasn't having it. So when I was saying it to him, it was just like you know going to one end and the other. And I was like, damn, I gotta do my own thing. So um, I started studying for the broker's exam, and I remember having a conversation with him, and I was like, hey, um, on Monday, I failed, I took the test, failed a couple of times. There wasn't no, there wasn't real motivation, but um, on a Monday, I was having a conversation with him, and he was like, yo, you could leave. If you, you don't have to be here if you want. If you don't want to, you you could leave. And my, and at that time, we had closed a bunch of different deals. We Like I said, you know, we made some, we made money. We You know, I thought that, you know, Again, I was telling this dude like, "Yo, let's expand." So I thought the relationship, the work relationship, was was improving. Mm-hmm. Um, and he was, and he said that to me. And I literally that week, that the weekend before, I spent Thursday, Friday, Saturday. I spent all that time at home studying for my broker for, for the broker's exam. And then, so when he said that to me on Monday, I literally went downstairs in, in the parking lot and hopped on my hot spot. I didn't even stay inside and like in his office I like went downstairs in my hot spot and then I I moved up the date that I needed to take the broker's exam from Friday that I had to schedule because I was nervous I had failed a few times so I moved it till Tuesday because I was just like yo fuck you you know what I mean like I'm upset like yo whatever yeah, you use that anger as a, as, yeah. as a driving force yeah so I went there and I remember I took the exam and I'm sitting there like I don't know if I was nervous I don't know like I, I was scared but this this lady walked by and was just like, "Yo, why you um you look like you?" She's like, "You look you look like you're scared or something like that." And then the guy would just pull out the shins like, "Congratulations, you passed." And I remember passing. And at that time, it's funny because like one of the things with me, like I got this thing, um, faith, consistency, and hard work, right? So I believe in faith. You know, just do whatever you want. So at that time, I had I had a, um, a, a business partner that I, I had different businesses that I was trying to do different things I was trying to do at the time. So I so I was already in the process of um, of getting an office under an, another um, another diff, um, business venture, um, like marketing or whatever it is. So um, so my the, the business partner I was working with at the time, he wasn't moving as fast as 
you know, I wanted to yeah. do the marketing. So like now it was just like, you know what? Fuck him. Fuck this this broker dude or whatever it is. I already had a office space in line in Mattapan where I'm at right now. So I had already have this in place. So it's just like, you know what? Fuck marketing. I'm gonna make this my real estate office. Um, you know, but like now I need to, you know, figure out the next stage. Now I, I got a broker's license, like what do I do now? You know what I mean? And it's like like now I have to, you know, start from scratch. So it took me about a month to fit to to, you know, I'm coming in here with no furniture, no nothing, and just like, yo, all right, I gotta figure this thing out. Um, I gotta make this work. So kind of like one one of those things that I just said to myself, you know, the, the dude that I was working before was a white guy, and I'm like, fuck, you know, I'm not working with white people no more. I need to find me a brother that that's gonna that that that's doing the things that I want to do. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I don't need I don't need anybody to hold my hands necessarily. I just need somebody to be like, oh yo, you could do this. Like you know what I'm saying? Like the same thing. Like yo, you could go out there and run a nine. I'm gonna go out there and run a nine too. If I catch, I catch it. Fuck it. But if you went out there and did it, I could do it. So and then hey, hey, look at look at look at the screen. Uh huh. <laughs> what? No more nines. <laughs> <laughs> I'm running a nine, man. <laughs> I'm running a nine. <laughs> so um, it's the hail mary, bro. Like I, I'm, I speak on. I speak. The reason I use the nine is it's the hail mary. I'm going, in, I'm going for it. I'm going it off. So. Um, you know, and I literally, and that's what I did. Um, connected with you know my business partner now, and and literally did 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 that. You know what I'm saying? Um, which, like I said, I wanted to do more. Which you know, eventually that opened me to doing real estate flips. You know, wholesaling, and you know, even you know, opened up to me doing this dispensary now. You know what I mean? So I would say like the biggest risk was just me. You know, like I, especially at the time too. Honestly, I had. Two. I had two listings. I had one listings for three point six. Mm-hmm. So basically, I walked away from a, a three point six, you know, listing million dollar listing, which ended up going on for. And again, it's kind of like how everything works, right? If I would have been like, nah, I got a three point six million dollar deal. Let me wait until that until I close it and I'm gonna leave. Yo, that property ended up going in foreclosure. That dude ended up losing that shit for two point nine, right? So if I would have stayed, I would have probably dealt with more bullshit from that dude. Than me leaving and and that listing ended up going to you know going to shit you know what I mean mm-hmm. so it kind of like sometimes like you know some things could could hold you back it's kind of like you know you hear uh, uh um I I was just talking to this dude Dwight Howard I guess you know Adidas offered him some money and he's like nah um, he doesn't want to take the deal he's like he want to wear Kobe's for the rest of the year it's like you knowing your value and you and the worth and knowing what you could do and not letting money or anything else stop you because like my thing was just like the fact that he just said it to me like, yo, oh, you could leave. You don't have to be here if you don't want to. Yeah, you know somebody I mean? said that shit to me once in the middle of a meeting. I was working for Puma, and you know what happened? You left. I walked right out the fucking meeting. It was fucking yeah. 13 people there. I, she was like, I was like, yo, Orlando's playing Denver right now on Monday Night Football. You said this shit was mandatory, and there's two fucking people not here. She's like, well, you don't have to be here. And I walked the fuck out and never came back. Yeah, yeah. so exactly. And, and like, I've, I've, I've had... Like I have that personality, you know what I mean? Like where I've 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 walked out on jobs before where I was just like, Yeah, what the fuck am I doing? I'm not doing this shit. Like I'm like, I got a call, you know, not not on no ego or, or, or whatever. I'm like, I got a college degree. I'm like, yo, I owe Sally, I owe Navy and a hundred thousand. I'm not coming in here. This is not gonna make no dent on my student loan. So I'm not doing shit that's not helping me. You know what I mean? And that's so, not I mean, it, the way that you stated it is like, oh, it's not an old ego shit. Um it is, and, and, and it's it's an earned ego. That's not a bad thing. Like you, I, I want, if you I feel that to... your value somewhere, then you damn sure better chase what your value is. Yeah, yeah, and 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 that's what I mean. Like, um, I was having that conversation with my wife. Was um, actually, yeah, it, it, yeah, you're right. It, um, we we actually used the, the negative word was arrogant. You know what I mean? People who's arrogant who haven't proven anything. Mm-hmm. So, so she was like, "Yeah, you could be prideful, you could have ego, but you know, on on things that you pro- you proven, and 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 like you just said, it's it's certain things that I'm like, yo, I've I've like I've worked my way up here, and it's like, yo, I can't go backwards, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So, so those are the type of things where it was just like, yo, I'm I'm not gonna do, you know what I mean? Like, I'm not gonna do that. Like this dude, you know, you didn't want me here. 
Um, I know what I could do. I know my capability. I know what I've learned. I know I could sell. I could get a, a million dollar listing. I know I could sell a million dollar listing. I don't necessarily need your help or your assistant. You know yeah. what I mean? We could build together, but if you're telling me I don't gotta be here, then that means you don't want me here. So I'm out. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? I'm, I'm gonna be. I'm gonna go where I'm wanted, and I'm not gonna. Again, it's kind of like that same mentality. I'm not gonna let. Oh shit! I had a three million dollar listing. I, I'm gonna stay until I close that deal. Like, yo, fuck you, fuck everything. Take take it all. I could start all over again. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And it's, it's with that mentality to where, actually, like, you know, after that, like, yo, this dude texts me, called me a few times trying to tell me to come back. Like, you know what I did? It's too late now. Unread. I didn't even reply. So where it's like, you did dude, a you did a motherfucking TT, dude. No. He replied, he, he replied, dude, don't do that like three times. Like, I don't even reply. It's like, it's like that, bro. I'm like, I, I, really I mean, you. I'm petty. I'm, a pl- yeah. I'm, I'm replying to everybody. I'm letting you know this is where I'm at. I mean, even if I'm, if I'm at a place where I, where you think I'm at, I'm still letting you know. Yo, yeah, this is where I'm. Where, where you think he, I'm at? Yeah, I'm there. Um, he knows. So he, and, he, and, he, and I ain't Of course, he knows. He, 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 he knows. So again, and he knows, and that's the reason why he's. Coming reaching out of course i need to out. get i need to get the it's like you it's like uh what's it florida state releasing i mean letting randy moss go yeah. you think they don't fucking know what they did you think at oakland when they traded randy moss to 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 fucking the patriots went oh shit god maybe we made a mistake or yeah. trading what's his name fucking khalil mack out of there like you know you made a fucking mistake so stop don't try to cover it up now just yeah. own that shit. Or the NFL right now saying, hey, we were wrong about Colin Kaepernick. No shit. No fucking yeah, shit. Bro. We knew that two years ago. Now mm-hmm. you're trying to eat your words and, you know, show us black shows on Amazon. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> the last question of the night, I lied. That wasn't the last question because I turned the page and I had another one. <laughs> so good. What advice do you give young men about ownership? What would be the last question of the night. Uh, you should, you need to own your shit. Anything that you do, you need to, you should own it. You want to own it. Um, business, and, property, uh, home ownership, yeah. everything. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, there's a lot of there's a lot of things I could say on that. I mean, like you know what I mean. Like you you should want to own it. But again, the biggest thing is is that 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 like the mindset of you know us not coming from it, not ever seeing it. So it's tough to realize it's possible and it's doable. Um, you know, this is a shameless shameless plug, but this is why I'm having this event next week um, called Kings Among Kings. The reason I'm doing this is just that um, I, I basically want to put together. Um, For, no, hey, I don't listen. This is an imperfect uh, podcast. The the point of this podcast. So, hey, I was about to post. Hey, hey that, where this, where is it at? Let me <laughs> see. The fifteenth to win. The fifteenth, October fifteenth. Where's it at? Uh, it's uh, uh, at the co pad. So I, so I got a co working space that which you know I didn't get to talk about that actually. Talk too. about that shit right yeah. now. That's good. You you did get so to talk about I, it. I forgot to talk about that. So um, I got a co working space in Madison Square. The reason I created this co working space is um, I, at one point when I needed some help, you know, what I'm saying needed some guidance, some resources, I couldn't find that in, in the community. So me being at this point, you know, kind of like what you just said, asking me for what advice would I give a younger generation or whatever it is. So what I what I did is open this co-working space where um, where all those resources are at, are at. You know what I mean? Or you can come and find those resources and actually have questions and you know and and network. So again, at the end of the day, everybody got businesses. Everybody's up and running. So what I want to do is actually create this group, monthly meetup group, where men could actually come in. And, and actually network and build and and just really build build amongst each other. Kind of like the same thing when we do when we you know when we before football practice or after football practice we just talk about whatever it is and it's sometimes like it's it's therapeutic. You know what I mean? I remember. Oh no, it was a different team. I was about to talk about. And football. It don't matter. Hey, listen, I don't give a fuck um, about. Listen, yeah, I don't Matthew. give a fuck about semi pro football. I'm yeah. beyond that shit. But what yeah, you're so, saying, yeah, say that. Yeah, Mike Massey. I remember. Um, what was it? Um, yoga Mike Massey. Yoga Mike. Yeah, yeah, Yoga yoga Mike. And again, energy and understanding people. Like, I think I had just got laid off from this job. It was around the, you know, this whole fucking, like, what the fuck? Like, with this real estate shit, like, you know, what do I do? 
how do I transition? Like, you know, trying to figure this thing out. So I'm out practice and not being my regular self. And and then he knew it. And and at the time, like I didn't I wasn't even smoking weed like that at the time, you know. And Mike came through and was just like, yo, here's something for you, baby. You know what I'm saying? Take care of that. And I'm like, what are you talking about? It's like, yo, you you're not you're not yourself, man. You're not moving right, Mills. And I'm like, yo, how'd you know I needed something, yo? I mean, give me some and like that camaraderie where we need that. Sometimes like yo, we going through a little something. It's just like a you know, need a pick me up. You know what I'm saying? So my goal is to create this 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 environment where we all could come in and have conversation and build with each other and have dudes, you know, hold you accountable and you know, you can say I do it. It's like constructive think, criticism. I love exactly. it. I love it. You know, and and like the way that like one one of the things I and I could tell you right and I this is this is me being transparent. One of the things that like I learned from that from this broker dude right um, that I was working with was like certain things you want to do, but like and I, as I mentioned to you, those roadblocks you put those roadblocks in front of you, right? And then a lot of time you put those roadblocks in front of you because like I just said, you've never seen anybody in your community, your friends own a house or whatever it is, so you feel like it's impossible, right? Yes. But it's just like yo, you just put that roadblock based on. The people you you knew well based on i mean i i literally created an entire powerpoint for this called my it's my diving boy success theory where it's the same Mm -hmm. type of mindset is when people go oh how come they don't do this as as i go because you you, with these buildings above you you can't even fucking see the sky yeah i'm trying to show you the fucking sky so after you look at the sky what you do with it after that is up to you but i'm gonna fucking show it to you yeah so so with this so one of the first things that I'm like, yo, a lot of people are they not they don't hold themselves accountable. You know what I mean? People are not self accountable. Like like I said, you know, it's like it's like you playing basketball, yo. You followed that dude, yo. You know you followed him. Yo, yo, it's me. I did that. Like, be honest with that. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like nobody's like when you play ball, you do that shit. Don't nobody yell at you and be like, get the fuck off the court. You know what I mean? If it's a good foul, it's a good foul. Like, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? So it's like, yo, be be that guy. You have that accountability. Like, when you fuck up, you did some shit wrong to your friends, your mom, whoever. Yo, own up to your shit. And then you got to be able to be like, yo, I fucked up. I shouldn't have done that or whatever it is. Own up to it, right? Then when you own up to your shit, then, like I said, then you can start changing your mindset and be like, yo, that was me. This relationship then, 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 then you know, then trends, uh, the difference, then, the difference in what you're saying is the difference between, you know, you make an, an excuse in staying uh, at the point where you're treading water. But when mm-hmm. you start to admit it, it's something to build upon and you move forward into a greater relationship because you trust that other person just as much as you trust yourself. Indeed. So, you know, changing your mindset, you know, Unlearning certain shit that we 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 thought, you know, you needed that nice car, you need that BMW, you need that Benz, you needed like you know expensive car. Nah, you don't need that shit, yo. You could drive a Nissan, you could drive a Prius, you could drive whatever you want to drive. That gets you from point to point B. You don't gotta listen to Jay Z to say, yo, we don't drive X5. We give them a baby's mamas. We, nah, yo, I was so I was, when I was at when I worked at I, met, I worked at Mass General for six years. I played in the basketball league that was there, and the first year I played, the dude that was the ran our team was like one of the fucking highest ranking top VPs of the hospital. And this motherfucker drove a dent resistant door Saturn Ion. Mm-hmm. And that's when I was like, oh shit, like yeah. this shit don't matter, but we're trying to please the wrong people. Um indeed, indeed. Um and you know, overcoming, you know what I'm saying, like overcoming challenges, like we all put shit in front of us, you know, mental health. You know, like again, at the end of the day, you can't want to invest if you're not stable, if you don't got a job, you know, take care of your family, you know what I'm saying? All these different things, like, you know, having life insurance. One of the biggest things that I hate seeing is, is I mean, I don't see, I haven't seen that often uh, as of late, is is GoFundMe when, you know, yeah, motherfuckers get shot or die. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Huh? I said, well, motherfuckers randomly die. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, you you know, life insurance is not expensive, bro. You could get life insurance for twenty, thirty dollars a month. The same way you pay that Comcast, you down down downgrade from Comcast and go to Roku and get your family, you know, buy. And, 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 and with that being said, I will. You know, uh, Comcast is two hundred dollars a month. Yep, insurance, uh, life insurance is twenty dollars a month. But when you month. when you start, which I have life insurance now, when you see beyond that. 
you're just, and we talked about this earlier, uh, you're mistaking what you need to invest in and what you don't need to invest in. You know, mm-hmm. finding out what said random fucking Beverly Hills housewives did this fucking week is not as important as preserving the legacy for your family to be able to move forward. Um, Kings Amongst Kings, is there a website? Is there an, uh, a formal event maybe on social media and how do people RSVP? Is there a phone number they need to call just so I can make sure that people get involved in this shit? Because um, like I said, every minority that I have on our podcast that's doing great things, I want to make sure, and it's not a shameless plug, that people know that we're doing great shit. For sure. Um, the, the event, the event bright is closed out. We sold out. Um, we sold out this month. Uh, so, I mean, my ideally, my goal is to try to have this on a monthly basis. So, in that case, for the monthly basis, um, where would they follow to be sure that they can be, you know, affiliated with next month? Leveling up, leveling up, leveling up um, the IG page and um, leveling up 2020 at Gmail. But, um, but either you can follow either the Copad or leveling up. Both of them have all the information on them. So. What's the full it level? Leveling up, leveling up. Spell that shit out, motherfucker. Don't sound. Let's get L L E V L E V E L apostrophe um N U U P. Leveling up. On Instagram, you can put yeah. an apostrophe on a website. Well, it's it's a uh, well no on a website. It's oh, no, all on, one word. So on Instagram. It's that, on Instagram, it's just all one word with no problem. With, uh, with, exactly, that's what I'm talking. about. Hold on one second. Let me look at this shit up. So on 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 Instagram, it's just it's L E V L and U P U uh U P. Leveling. Nope, that ain't it. See, I just fucked up. It went to the wrong shit. I'm trying to make sure we get the right shit up here, man. L E V E L and U P underscore. That's the uh, that's the IG. That's the IG. Yeah, that's the IG. The website is is levelingup.com. The L E V E L and really, you bought that? Damn, that's crazy. That's a good. That's a nice little name right there. Yeah, yeah. Yo, they they. It's funny, yo. Um, I I, I spent more than I than I should have spent for it, yo. Somebody bought that shit like right before. Somebody bought it, yo, and then I had to pay him for it. No, you didn't. You should have just did leveling up. Oh, fuck those people. That shit no, don't really matter that much these days. No, some motherfucker really bought that shit. I think I spent over 900 for it, bro. Wow. Well, yeah, yo, some motherfucker. Yo, listen, you know a dude, so there's an Asian dude that he created a program that bought every extension of websites that people accidentally go to and call agoga.com. Mm-hmm. So he, uh, he made a deal with Cameroon president. That he would buy shit like Yahoo.cm, Facebook.cm, and then he sold it back to the majors so that if anybody typed CM instead of .com, it would hit his page. And he made $400 million in two years. You know, um, like, you know, this is actual business, right? Like, for example, right now, like, I don't know if you have a website for the Imperfect Podcast, right? I do. Okay, right, so let's just say you if you decide if you didn't buy the website, if you didn't buy the name, you didn't buy the website, like somebody will buy that shit and just wait for you and then whenever you want to buy it, be like, oh, fifteen hundred. Then question like that's crazy. You could have paid and then you could have spent like like when I bought Yo, like, so I FTL, had, FTL.com is fifteen G's. I was like, nah, I'm not buying that. FTL for the love, baby. Let's go. Yeah. But that's what I'm saying. Exactly. So you could be creative enough and and, and, and but that's what I mean, right? Is these roadblocks? You got people who tell you like, "Oh, I was gonna call my company this, but I couldn't do it because of this." It's like, nigga, fucking. Ask Cardi comes out, yo. People are trying to prey on your creative fucking genius. So all you need to do is take one more step with with your creative genius yeah. and move forward. The end all. Somebody asked me. This is this is some real shit. I have an app right now, and I'm, I'm looking to pull it out. Somebody said, "Yo, before you release your app, what if somebody came out and and." offered you 250k for your app and I was like I'll take that shit right now and they were like what if they turned it into you know millions of dollars like I don't care because I have so many fucking ideas that me having you know releasing this one idea for 250k all it does is allow me to take part in all my other fucking oh, ideas God, that I have. Yeah, because so, you don't got enough money to fucking do them shits now. So if you feel that one person oh. shut, you down, shut your ass down with a fucking name, then you was never ready to go in the first place. 
Yeah, and, and absolutely. There's a lot of people. There's a lot like it's it's a process. You know what I mean? It 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 steps to it. So if you if you if you already defeated at the first step, then you ain't ready. I think the other day I forgot what company um it was. Shit, I'm not gonna say it was Google, but one of these tough companies legit forgot to renew their name. Somebody bought it for that name for that day and made, and made them pay millions for it. It happens all the time. Like, that shit you know happens what I mean? all the time. And leveling exactly. up, exactly. So, listen, levelingup.com is where it's at. So if you want to go to leveling up, y'all got a podcast? Yeah, I had a podcast. All right, tag me in that shit, man. I, I start. I started. Do, I started. I mean, I'll be honest. I started doing a podcast earlier this year, but like, I'm too busy, man. I just can't. The, the format that I want to do it, um, I, can't, I couldn't be consistent. It's with hard to get shit. everybody on the same page. I get you. Yeah, exactly. So I couldn't. So I could. That's and I'll be honest with you. That's the reason that I'm doing the um, the monthly meetup because my goal is to just trying to give you know I me mean, trying to have these conversation, trying to have these conversation in in a place. But it's just like, yo, then you got to bring these people. So I figured, you know what? I'm just going to get all these people in one room. We all put them here. And whoever, like, when you're in our room and then you heard, like, there's an attorney here. If you need an attorney, yo, go talk to that guy, yo. You know what I'm saying? And if, if you were in here, you you, heard, you you wanted to get a property manager because you got some properties, go talk to that guy, yo. You needed whatever you needed, some, some you know, some, uh, um, you know, I got this guy yesterday. He called me talking about he wants to open up a... Um, a jersey, a baseball jersey store in East Boston. Nah, fuck like, that guy. I got a baseball jersey store. Shut that I, down. I, I'm, I'm over here thinking this dude <laughs> like, yo, bro. I'm like, yo, bro, did you just come out of jail? Because do you not understand East Boston is super expensive and you want to open up a jersey store in East Boston? Like, I'm like, yo, come on, man. Have you ever seen the, what's the ESPN broke where Bill was like, yo, everybody likes ketchup. So we make a <laughs> tomato farm. You you deal with that shit all the time. So I mean, that's what it is. Um, I, listen, <laughs> if I can video into the to, to to the kings amongst kings, I'm certainly down for that. Um, uh, unfortunately, my 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 um, like I said, the goal to it is just like is 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 to give you know what I mean is to provide us a, a space. You know what I'm saying for people to feel like they could be vulnerable, they could be open, they could share their their, their stories, whatever it is, whether it's about their, you know, their baby moms, their their financial issues that they don't they don't feel, you know, what I'm saying like it do people's gonna judge or anything like that. So no cameras, whatever things, whatever happens in our room, stay in our room, or whatever it is. You know what that's I mean? A, so yo, that, that, that's 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 one of the greatest things ever because culture in yourself is everything. You know, when it comes to food, when it comes to different things, that's not considered fucking cool or whatever the fuck you're supposed to be doing at the time and what's supposed to be doing means absolutely nothing because your level of success and what you deem successful is kind of what it is at the end of the day i did an episode earlier you know with the the national director of the calculus project and he said if you're black and in massachusetts or anywhere in the united states you better have a fucking lawyer and that's what it comes down to so stuff as simple as that Yo. It's the little advice that you need to listen to, and I'll exactly. let I'll let Jeff close out the night. Yo, so that's exactly. Um, I was having a conversation with a person, and that's again part of that. Um, Kings among kings is is protection. Protection doesn't necessarily mean having a gun. Yo, it means having a fucking uh, um, an attorney on retainer. So as you driving home, you know you get pulled over and you get arrested. It's not to argue because like. When you watch these gangster movies, those are things that like I realize that when you watch these gangster mobster movies that we all like, when these dudes get arrested, they don't say nothing. They get arrested, they get in there, they make their own they, they make their phone call. Then when their attorney comes and say, Yo, what do you have on my client? He's he's getting out of here, then that's when that dude starts talking shit. That's when he call he start calling the cop yep. a pig. That's when he call you know what I'm saying, do all that shit. Not before, because before you get that's when you get fucked up, you get the black eye, you you know, you get fucking Bullets in, in you. Not to say these shits can't happen, but having that having that attorney in place, it saves you a lot of headache. It saves you a lot of money because again, once you make that call, whether it's two in the morning, you call that attorney. He knows, yo, the reason he's living in his nice little uh, um house, wherever he's living in his little mansion or whatever it is, is because of retainers that he has for clients like you and others that allows him to have that lifestyle. So whenever you call him at 2 a.m., he knows he got to say, yo, baby, I got to go bail my client out. Because this is and just worth it. You know, th th this is why The Wire is the best 
show ever. Bro, exactly. Yo, honestly, I'm, <laughs> glad, I'm glad I did not watch The Wire when that shit was going on, right? I, I actually watched The Wire, I think maybe earlier this year. Like, I watched The Wire either earlier this year or late last year, and that's, like, the best thing ever for me, yo. Like, that's the best thing I ever did. Like, and that was one of those things that I'll, I'll be up at 2, 3 in the morning watching because I'm like, I got to finish this shit. And, like, this is, like, I, I got to learn about, really, about politics, um, cops. Yo, you media. know, so do you know that on The Wire, like, some of the dudes that were the politicians in the show were real dirty politicians in Baltimore in real life? Oh, shit. So that's why the show is so real, and, and um, like with that being said, I can't I can't stress it anymore, man. Like, take take part in everything that you feel will make you successful, and um, Jeff, obviously, thank you for everything you're doing, everything as far as investing back in the community and teach people how to buy and how to, you know, own the properties that they own because um. That shit's more important than anything that you could possibly think is is important or what Migos is telling you to fucking do at the time. And, yeah. and ownership there is, is everything. There, there is so many different ways of owning or owning properties, owning shit, where it's not it's not like one of the biggest thing, right? Like people who say, yo, I wanna own multifamily, I wanna own this, but I don't got it. Yo, it's really easy, for example, right? Let me just let's just say something, right? Right? You know what? It's forty of us, right? It's usually forty of us that go to that goes that goes down there, right? Let's just say if we if the forty of us, I'm not I'm let's just say use small numbers, a thousand dollars a piece, right? That's forty thousand dollars. Yeah, forty thousand dollars. That's that's a down payment to buy something, right? I, I now, listen. I put a thousand dollars on my house down here in listen, Florida. Yeah. Let me let me tell you something. Let me tell you how easy this is, right? Now. If we all say like yo, for example, like let's just let's let's just say that the the, the condo we stay at in 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 in, um, in Costa Rica, right? Let's just say that that forty bands was a down deposit on it, right? Yo, Ray, we could all have an operating agreement, right? That says you know Tropic Bull LLC is going to buy that property, right? Under the under well, I mean we buying that property under Tropic Bull LLC. Everybody's been contributing a thousand dollars, right? Into the LLC, and then your thousand dollars give you, let's just say, a ten percent return every year, right? Whatever it is on, but like just having that operating agreement, it's ownership. Like you own that. So, so with that like being said, and that's easy as that. That's off the episode, I already know all the information on that condo, the purchase uh, amount to buy it, and the percentage per year in which it rents. So we can have that conversation off this shit, and we can you can set that shit up so where people invested and we actually start an investment firm to buy one of those condos that rents at minimum because they said eighty percent a year. So I assumed fifty, and at fifty you still make a crazy amount of percentage per year on whatever it rent at. For sure, it's like it's nothing for like when you think about this. Like for us, um, like I know dudes that's that still haven't left Boston, right? It's not no motherfuckers that ain't left Brockton to go to Boston. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? You, you, uh, the whole yeah. taunting semi-pro football team. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, that's real. That's actually real. But like again. I'm sure there's dudes that's the first time they went to Costa Rica. They went, you know what I mean? They hop on a plane or whatever it is, right? So you think about like that type of system, that type of, you know what I mean, saying like, yo, okay, well maybe it's not Costa Rica that the 40,000 could give us, you know what I mean, could give us um purchasing power. Maybe is maybe is it's St. Croix. You know what I mean? Maybe is I don't know, Jamaica or whatever. But like it's like, okay, well this is what we're doing and let's just do it. Mhm. And then, and like that's just what it is. And like I said, the ownership, that's the ownership, yo. By you having that piece of paper that says, yo, you know, Jeff Simillion owns ten percent of uh, Tropical Bowl that owns ten percent of. Hey, oh, 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 don't oh, say oh, Tropical I'm, Bowl. I'm, I'm sorry, like I'm just using. I have to cease and desist, but... Tropical Bowl. It's TropicBowlCR.com. What, whatever, whatever, whatever the LLC, whatever the en- entity that we we use to purchase whatever it is, and that's all it is. Now, like everybody has a, 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 a owning interest in that property, it's that simple. Then, whatever the property makes, you get a, a return percent on off that. 
So listen, at the end of the night, for everybody that's watching, we're going to own some shit next year because Jeff's going to organize that shit and we're going to own it as a group. Bro, absolutely. That's like, that's the easy shit, like, yo, we all need to be on, you know, like group economics. Like, yo, one of my guys just got his license and, and like, when I go to these places, like, I legit, like, you could ask any, like, you guys, Jamel, he knows when, when, when we go on vacation and we go places together, like, yo, that's all I'm looking at. Like, what company's down here? Yeah. Like Keller Williams, like all these big companies, they own these places. Reason why? Because motherfuckers with money here, that's what they do. Yeah. You take a hundred thousand, a hundred thousand, you go buy real estate down there, like you buy this shit outright, you don't pay no taxes on it, then you then you say, Yo, I did the ten thirty nine and that's reinvestment because you invest in real estate. If you know Trump, that's why he don't pay taxes, because he buys real estate. All right, shit, I know people in Costa Rica, we, we could put that shit in other people's name. But that's, that's for another really, episode. That's another episode. But it's not even, we won't even necessarily to do that. I just told you how to do it. Just put it on the entities, bro. And at the end of the day, yo, you just get that. Hey, listen, hey, yo, let me cut you off. You ain't going to show, oh, yeah. you You ain't you ain't showing, a, you ain't telling us how to do it. We doing that shit. We doing so that shit. So by next year, we it. own some shit, everybody that's watching. And then you can look at that shit. Have a great night, everybody. Own some shit. Jeff, thank you for everything, bro. And I'll see you in November. I ain't coming. All right. Oh. <laughs> Yo, my, my, um, I'm too busy.